हेलो गाइस आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन दिस वंडरफुल प्लेटफॉर्म दैट इज बाइजूज एग्जाम प्रेप सो गाइस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व द गेट 2024 मैकेनिकल पेपर ऑल 65 क्वेश्चंस विल बी सॉल्व्ड इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड गाइस बिफोर वी स्टार्ट सॉल्विंग लेट अस सी सम हाइलाइट्स की हाइलाइट्स ऑफ द गेट 2024 फॉर मैकेनिकल स्टूडेंट्स सो गाइस इफ यू सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द कंपैरिजन ऑफ द नंबर ऑफ कैंडिडेट्स फ्रॉम द लास्ट ईयर लास्ट ईयर 82233 कैंडिडेट्स फिल द फॉर्म This year, eighty-three thousand one hundred fourteen filled the form. Slight increase have been seen. Appeared candidates last year was sixty-three thousand four eighty-nine. This year was sixty-five thousand five forty-six. Once again, slight increase is there. And last year cutoff was twenty-eight point four. This year twenty-eight point six for general. Twenty-five point five last year for OBC. Twenty-five point seven for general. Uh, sorry, for OBC this year eighteen point nine for SCST last year nineteen this year. Slight increase have been seen in the cutoff because last year paper was on the uh, you can say the first uh, toughest side. This this year also paper was of good level, okay. But yes, slightly you can say uh, this year paper was slightly lengthy. Uh, that's why you can see uh, the uh, the cutoffs are near to the last year papers. But uh, difficulty wise, I would say that last year paper was more difficult because there the questions were there from the new areas uh, which were. not previously asked but you see this year paper questions were more from the predictable areas but yes some calculations wise if you see uh, lengthy calculations were involved in the paper okay and this year a lot of mta have been seen in mechanical paper two mta of aptitude mta means marks to all two mta was, were given just after the solution without challenging the questions by the students and after that more mta came also we will discuss about mta also in this session okay so guys let us discuss about the weightage analysis so guys if you see this year out of 65 question you know that first of all there are three categories of the questions one is going to be numerical answer type other is mcq third is msq so you can see highest number of mcqs 39 were asked 24 nat and two msqs were asked msq were asked from two areas one is power plant other is a strength of material these were two msqs asked in the paper so then we are going to talk about uh, general aptitude you know 15 marks are there 5 1 marks 5 2 marks all were mcqs and guys if you see the weightage wise as usual production was having the highest weightage and also if you will see uh, other subject wise more or less similar type of weightage have been seen and one more thing you can see for rac there was no question for ic engine there was no question so these two subjects were having no weightage this year and guys if you talk about other subject for fluid mechanics we were having one two marks nt uh, nat and uh, one mark one two marks mcqs were there and if you talk about uh, thermodynamics total two two marks nat one one marks mcq was there when we talk about power plant one two marks nat one one mark mcq and one two marks msq were there and guys for ic engine no question heat transfer three two marks three one marks two marks nat one marks uh, mcqs were there and then you can see for engineering mechanics two questions were there of one mark mcq then for theory of machines three questions two marks nat and two questions one marks mcq for theory of machines questions were of very good level you can say and then we are talking about strength of material four two marks question and one uh, two marks msq was there and then you can talk about machine design this time machine design was having almost four marks and here i would like to make a disclaimer that theory of failure marks are added to strength of material in reality if you see the syllabus of mechanical engineering including theory of failures into the machine design so keeping that machine design was having high weightage okay so i would like to say the next subject is production you know that 5 into 2 10 plus 6 16 marks production was there and industrial engineering was for 2 plus 2 4 plus 4 8 marks good weightage was there this year for engineering mathematics as usual you know 3 2 marks means 6 plus 5 11 plus 2 13 marks as usual you know that and the last one you can see the total okay so these are the subject wise analysis we have seen now my dear you can see the comparison of last year and this year you can see if you are talking about marks wise for fluid mechanics weight is reduced for thermodynamics it is slightly reduced and you can see for power plant it is increased for heat transfer it is increased for engineering mechanics it is reduced for tom it is increased you can see for som it is 
slightly decreased you can see machine design nearly same but if you add those two marks here machine design is increased so is reduced okay but why i am not saying this because last year also theory of failure was considered in soap so why it is considered because uh, with the principal stresses generally theory of failure is taught that's the reason so dear if you talk about manufacturing last year 23 this year 16 this make last year paper very different than the previous years that is the main reason why cutoff got reduced last year a lot then you can see industrial engineering eight marks last year only two marks and rest is going to be same first of all rakesh sir would be coming for aptitude question then for technical part chandra shekhar sir vipin sir and i will be solving all the questions and at the last we will see engineering mathematics question all 65 questions we will be solving here so you can take this session as reference for gate 2024 solutions here you are getting the authentic solution so now rakesh sir would be starting aptitude questions Hi students, so first of all in this gate 2024 mechanical complete detailed solution discussion let us get started with the questions from general aptitude and then Dheerat sir, Chandra sir, Vipin sir will be carrying forward with all your technical questions as well. Okay, so let's get started ahead. Okay, uh, you know there's a pattern this year that is observed in every branch be it mechanical or civil E, C, E, W, E etc. that you know there are only two questions of verbal and I believe for most of the engineering community it is a good sign because many of the engineers are not that uh, they can they can really be good in quantity and reasoning if not good they can practice and improve but english and verbal is something like if you are good from childhood you will be able to attempt otherwise many students leave it so only two questions are there one question of one mark one question of uh, two marks total three marks okay earlier it used to go up to four to five marks okay so let's not discuss much about verbal let's have a quick discussion and discuss more about the quant and the reasoning part okay so if uh, arrow denotes the increasing order of intensity as an example also if smile giggle and laugh you know increasing expression okay smile take a hus uh, thoda sa hasna and laughing is like ekdam dhang se jaise haste hain hum log okay it is analogous to what disapprove dash and chid okay the correct answer for this guys is reprove Okay, so you know, disapprove you all know, okay, not agreeing to somebody, but reprove is telling somebody, okay, telling somebody that yes, I don't approve of your thing and jide is something when you, it's like show your strong anger, okay, because you disagree to somebody, because you disapprove of somebody, okay, so intensity of expression is increasing, okay. Next, chalo, let's come to this one. The real variables x, y, z and the real constants p, q are satisfy this equation. Okay, given that the denominators are non-zero, what is the value of Px plus Qy? A very basic simplification question. Okay, what should be the value of Px plus Qy plus Rz? Okay, so all of this are equal and suppose they are equal to k. <coughs> suppose they are equal to k. So I can take the value of x in that case. So what is the value of x? Okay, so this is going to be how much? This is going to be P into x will be k times Pq minus R square plus q into y, y is going to be k times into qr minus p square, okay, plus the r into z, r and z will be equal to k times rp minus q square, okay. It is very logical that, you know, if I simplify either the answer will be in terms of k, but k is not a given data, it is neither in the options nor in the given question, the answer cannot be in k, okay. Basically all terms are going to simplify and hence the answer is going to become 0, okay. So if you take this k outside, na, then you have p square q minus p r square, okay, plus q square r, okay, minus p square q plus r square p and last term is minus q square r. Okay, so they go Q square R cancelled, R square P cancelled, P square Q cancelled, everything cancelled, answer is 0, simple question, simplification per question, tha simple for one mark, let's go ahead to the next question, find the odd one out, very simple again, okay, 1937, 21, 17, etc, as you are able, might be able to observe that 21 is the only number which is not a prime number, which is a composite number, okay, rest others, okay, all of them are, prime numbers except 21 so 21 is odd one out which does not follow the pattern of the other numbers okay simple one okay next one going ahead to the fourth okay take too long dice Achha, there are two questions on series okay it's, it's not series it's odd one out but ultimately uh, connected with numbers and there was one more let me go to that okay so in the following series identify the number that needs to be changed to form a fibonacci series okay 
question and they mentioned also what series Fibonacci series okay so you know what is that Fibonacci series the sum of two uh, two terms will be producing the third term the one plus one is two okay okay then sum of these two consecutive terms okay one plus two should produce the next term three perfect okay so according to this Fibonacci logic two plus three should be equal to five yeah six should not come okay okay so this is the number needs to be replaced and if i replace it by 5 then it works okay next combination is 3 and 5 that gives 8 next is going to be 5 and 8 that gives 13 okay so rest all the numbers are correct okay next 8 and 13 that's 21 okay sometimes they can even ask the next term of the series okay so then in that case answer will be how much 34 and etc okay so the number that needs to be replaced that needs to be changed is 6 okay so that the given series becomes a fibonacci series okay yeah, now let us come to this question. So take two long dice that is rectangular parallel pipe. Okay, yeah. what is a rectangular parallel pipe? Nothing, cuboid. Okay, cuboidal forms of dice you have to take, each having four rectangular uh, faces labeled as 2, 3, 5, and 7. Okay, if thrown, the long dice cannot land on the square faces. Okay, the long dice cannot, uh, you know, land on the square faces. Yeah, given hai. Aisa hi hoga. Okay, so a rectangular parallel pipe, nothing but just a cuboid. Okay. Okay, so these two. Okay, there are two square faces. Okay, but the other rectangular faces are numbered as 2, 3, 5, 7. Okay, the dice cannot land on this. Ispe numbering bhi nahi hai, but it is given that the dice cannot land on the square faces. Okay. And it has 1 by 4 probability of landing on any one of the 4 rectangular faces. Uniform. Rest for rest for distribution. It is uniform. Rest for numbers. Okay. The label on the top face of the dice is the score of the throw. Okay. So, whatever comes on the dice, the top, that is the score. Okay. If thrown together, there are 2 na. If thrown together, what is the probability of getting the sum? Okay. Of the 2 long dice. The sum of the 2 long dice. Okay. Scores greater than 11. Okay, scores greater than 11. Okay, so you have the numbers 2, 3, 5, 7 on the dice 1. Dice 2 is also same 2, 3, 5, 7. Okay, so when you want to talk about the sum, okay, how the sum is greater than 11, what are the combinations? First of all, what is going to be the sample space? What's going to be the sample space here? Okay, the sample space is going to be just like a normal dice sample space for two dice is 36, 6 square. Na? Okay, the size of the sample space, let me show you the sample. Okay, with two, okay, there can be two. With two, you can obtain three on the next dice, etc, etc, etc. Okay, similarly, three case are two, three case are three, four cases will be here. And till seven, <coughs> comma five, seven, comma seven. For every throw in dice 1, there can be 4 options in dice 2. So, number of elements is nothing but 4 square. Like 6 square, it is 4 square. Where there are 16 outcomes. Now, out of the 16 outcomes, uh, very simple question. How to get the sum greater than 11? Okay. So, 2 plus any other thing. Even if you take the maximum 7, it cannot be greater than 11. Okay. 3 plus 7 also is up to 10. So, you have to take from 5 only. Okay. That 2 greater than 11. So, 5 plus 5 will not come. So, 5 comma 7. Okay. Okay, let us say this is the favorable event. Then you can take 7 comma 3. No, then you can only take 7 comma 5 and 7 comma 7. Okay. Okay. So, how many elements? Probability of this set is equal to number of elements in it divided by the number of elements in the sample space. 3 by 16. Answer is C. Simple question. Okay, a very regular question on dice. Only thing they have changed the dice. Okay, just to confuse you on the language. Okay, otherwise questions based on sum of two dice is very, very common and very, very repeated type of question. Let's move ahead to the next one. Huh, this was anyways done. Yeah, so next type of question in almost every other branch is same pattern. First question is that based on vocab, increasing intensity of words. So basically that is vocab, the first question. You must know the word meaning, otherwise the question is gone. Okay, this is on word fitting based on the grammar, based on grammar and logic also of the given statement. Okay, so let me give you the answer for this. Professor P Okay, Dash merely a man who narrated funny stories. Take a Dash in his blackest moments, he was capable of self-deprecating the humor. Okay, so Professor P was not merely a man who narrated funny story, but even in his blackest moment, he was able to. Okay, so he used to have a lot of humor in his lectures, in his stories, in his classes. But on the other hand, Professor Q was a man 
ओके हु हार्डली नरेटेड वो एक ऐसा बनता था जो मतलब ही इज फोकसिंग ओनली ऑन यू नो टीचिंग और टेलिंग स्टोरी बट देर इज नो यू नो नरेशन अबाउट फनी स्टोरीज ओके ओनली इन हिज ब्लैकेस्ट मोमेंट ही वॉज एबल टू फाइंड द ह्यूमर ओके सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी आंसर सी चलो सो लेट्स मूव अहेड टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू बी नंबर सेवन ओके सिंपल क्वेश्चन ऑन डेटा इंटरप्रिटेशन ओके नो कैलकुलेशन वुड बी रिक्वायर्ड जस्ट ऑब्जर्वेशन बेस्ड क्वेश्चन है द बार चार्ट गिव्स द बैटिंग एवरेजेस ऑफ वीके एंड आर एस इट्स अंडरस्टूड विराट कोहली एंड रोहित शर्मा फॉर इलेवन कैलेंडर ईयर्स फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व टू टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी टू कंसिडरिंग दैट टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन एंड टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन आर वर्ल्ड कप ईयर्स विच ऑफकोर्स वर वर्ल्ड कप ईयर्स वी नो इफ दो फॉलो क्रिकेट ओके विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ऑप्शन इज ट्रू which of the following options is true based on the bar graph okay vk has a higher uh, yearly batting average than that of rs in every world cup year what is a world cup year okay 2015 2019 okay and kya bola hai vk has a high dekho in 2015 this dark orange is rohit sharma this light uh, one is virat kohli so kato 15 mein okay agar world cup years ki baat kare 15 and 19 okay so in the 15 rohit sharma has better average than virat kohli but in 19 virat kohli has slightly better average than the rohit sharma okay this is 15 and 19 okay so definitely a is wrong okay now vk's yearly batting average is consistently higher than that of rs between the two world cup years between the two world cup years ab aap isko dekhoge okay vk on the top vk higher vk higher yes so between the two world cup years virat kohli average is consistently higher option b is correct it is a mcq question only one option can be correct mcq to mark question only one can be correct and hence you can stop but okay let me explain you the other also kya bola hai rohit sharma's yearly batting average is consistently higher than that of vk in the last 3 years last 3 years okay these are the last 3 years ओके बट यू सी नो समाइम्स आर समाइम्स आर एस मोर समाइम्स वी के मोर अगेन समाइम्स आर एस तो कंसिस्टेंटली किसी का भी हायर नहीं है एज कम्पेयर टू अदर तो सी इज रॉन्ग ओके आर एस एज अयर बैटिंग एवरेज देन दैट ऑफ वी कैन एवरी नो इन एवरी वर्ल्ड कप ईयर ओके वन 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 टाइम रोहित शर्मा वन टाइम विराट कोहली एस हाइएस्ट ठीक है सो ए और डी दोनों ही रॉन्ग हो गए इन दैट सेंस तो बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन Ah, this is basically a visualization uh, question. So I'll give you the answer for this. What, what this question is asking you, this is more on your self visualization. A planar rectangular paper has two V-shaped pieces which are attached as shown below. Okay, now we need to fold this. Okay, this piece of paper is folded. It's a decent, simple question on folding. Okay, to obtain the following three-dimensional closed, ah, uh, the closed three-dimensional object. How many folds are required? Okay, how many folds are required? ठीक है सो ऑफ कोर्स डियर ओके दीज टू वीज आर अवेलेबल ओके दिस इज ऑल्सो द वी बैक साइड ऑल्सो इज द वी सो यू हैव टू समहाउ फोल्ड अ पिक्चर ओके एंड सच दैट दीज टू फोल्ड्स ओके दीज टू वी सेक्शन बिकम पैरल ये हो गया अभी उसके पीछे भी देल बी पैरल ओके एंड इन बिटवीन दम यूजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर फोल्ड यू गेट दिस पर्टिकुलर सेक्शन ओके सो टू ऑप्टेन दिस वॉट इज द नंबर ऑफ फोल्ड रिक्वायर्ड सो सिंस इट इज विजुअलाइजेशन क्वेश्चन आई गिव यू द डायरेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस यू कैन हैव अ नोट इन टू इट ओके सी वेन यू वन बाय वन फोल्ड अलॉन्ग दीज नाइन डॉट्स एज आई हैव मैंशनड ओके यू विल गेट द रिक्वायर्ड शेप सो आई होप यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज द सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेटरी केस आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी ओके बिकॉज इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू डायरेक्टली विजुअलाइज यू विल टू इट्स अ सेल्फ विजुअलाइजेशन ओके दैट्स वाई आई गिविन यू द कंप्लीट आंसर विद दिस पिक्चर ओके तो आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी नाइन फोर विल बी रिक्वायर्ड नाउ गाइज एज यू नो इन मैकेनिकल देर हैव बीन मस्ट बी ऑलरेडी अवेयर दैट देर आर टू एम टी एज इन एप्टीट्यूड ब्लेंडर हैव है सो द नेक्स्ट टू क्वेश्चन कमिंग अप ओके एज पर दफिशियल आंसर की ओके मार्क्स टू ऑल मार्क्स टू ऑल राइट इवन यू नो बिफोर द चैलेंजेस केम अप ना यू नो वेन आई आई टी गेव आई आई सी गेव द फाइनल आंसर की ओके बिफोर ओपनिंग द चैलेंज पोर्टल they they themselves declared empty hai matlab you know just after conduction of paper they realized ki question galat ban gaya hai okay had it been checked or proofread earlier okay now lot of students would not have wasted time now somebody wasted time this is a good question similar question was there in mechanical last year also but this is a good question okay uh, so easily somebody could have wasted 2 to 3 minutes take a why 2 to three? maybe it can be solved in one minute also but when options are not matching na and you have given some time so you try to recheck consistently kya ye to mereko aata hai why it is not happening so students definitely some students might have wasted 2 to 3 minutes some students would be that you are counting me i am not that good i will leave the question 
ओके सो दो स्टूडेंट वेस्टेड थ्री मिनट दो थ्री मिनट्स आर टोटली वेस्टेड ना एंड यू नो दैट कैन ड्रास्टिकली अफेक्ट द रैंक एंड परफॉर्मेंस सो दीज थिंग शुड नॉट हैपन बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली इट हैपन ओके ना सिंस इट इज एम टी ए लेट्स नॉट लीव लेट्स डिस्कस एटलीस्ट वॉट इज द करेक्ट आइडिया एंड आंसर फॉर द क्वेश्चन हाउ मेनी कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ नॉन नल सेट यहां पर नॉन नल बोला है ओके ए बी सी आर पॉसिबल फ्रॉम द सबसेट्स ऑफ टू थ्री फाइव सेटिस्फाइंग द कंडीशन ए इज अ सबसेट ऑफ बी ओके Now subset means it's not mentioned at proper subset. Okay, so A, okay, uh, you know, can have the elements which is a part of B. Okay, and A can even be equal to B. Okay, that is also a subset condition. When they say proper subset, then A belongs to B. But A belongs to or equal to B. Okay, and B is a subset of C. Okay, B is further a subset of C. Okay, this is what is mentioned. So what we can do here is okay. Let's start with the first condition. Okay, let us start. See what is given to you. what is given to you there is a sample space let me call this as the sample space which contains the number any three numbers na 2 3 5 okay now okay now the first condition okay let us say let's say that c is completely equal to 2 3 5 i mean this can be done in 3 c 3 ways okay let's see how many ways you can form c okay the first way is take all the elements in c pehle bade wale se start karte because b is a subset and then a is a subset to so think about the largest one c ओके नाउ व्हाट आर व्हाट कैन बी बी इक्वल टू ध्यान देना ओके नाउ बी कैन कंटेन ऑल थ्री एलिमेंट्स बिकॉज आई टोल्ड यू ना सबसेट्स मीन बी बिलोंगिंग टू और इक्वल टू ए सो बी ओके कैन बी सिलेक्टेड इन थ्री सी थ्री वेज और 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 ओके यू कैन सिलेक्ट एनी टू एलिमेंट सबसेट है ना यू कैन चूज एनी टू एलिमेंट्स आउट ऑफ दिस थ्री एंड हाउ इन हाउ मेनी वेज यू कैन चूज एनी टू एलिमेंट्स थ्री सी टू और यू कैन चूज एनी वन एलिमेंट थ्री सी वन नल सेट इज नॉट अलाउड अदरवाइज नल सेट इज ऑल्सो सबसेट ऑफ एनी सेट ओके बट यहां पे नल सेट नहीं लेना है सो विल स्टॉप हियर ओके सो दिस इज थ्री सी वन नाउ विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू बी हाउ मेनी केसेस ऑफ ए कैन बी ऑप्टेन सपोज इसके बारे में सोचेंगे ओके हेयर आई हैव टेकन ओनली वन एलिमेंट इन बी ओके सपोज दैट वन एलिमेंट इन बी इज सपोज टू सो नाउ इन हाउ मेनी वेज यू कैन फॉर्म ए इन हाउ मेनी वेज यू कैन फॉर्म ए ओके ए इज अबसेट ऑफ बी ओके सो ए विल बी इक्वल टू टू ओके इससे नीचे जा नहीं सकते नल सेट नॉट अलाउड सो इन ओनली वन वे यू कैन फॉर्म A. Okay, so with respect to this, A can be selected in two. Uh, A can have only one possibility, actually. A can have only one possibility. Now, three C two. If B has two elements, okay. If B has two elements, suppose two and three. In how many ways you can select A? Okay. In how many ways you can select A? देखो, in you can select A first. A can be containing both the elements, so that is two C two. Okay. Or A can contain any one element, that is two C one. That is two C one. Clear? Here, if B contains three elements, if B contains all three elements, two, three, five, then what about A? Okay, A is a subset. A less than or equal to B. मतलब A can be equal to B also. So first possibility, A also containing all the three elements. Next, A containing any two elements, or next, A containing any one element. Okay, these are the counts for A. These are the counts for A. ठीक है. So what is the total number of cases? ओके व्हाट इज द टोटल नंबर ऑफ केसेस हियर यहां पे देखेंगे ओके सी ओके 3c3 3c3 का वैल्यू होता है 1 ओके नाउ b विद एवरी वैल्यू ऑफ b ओके विद एवरी वैल्यू ऑफ b नाउ दिस इज 3c3 ओके व्हिच इज अगेन 1 देयर इज दिस विल बी इक्वल टू 7 ओके देन अगेन c में तो एक ही केस है आई एम मल्टीप्लाइंग देयर काउंट्स ओके b 3c2 इज 3 एंड फॉर एवरी केस ऑफ b देयर आर टू दिस इज 1 प्लस 2 थ्री केसेस इन a ओके नेक्स्ट There is one way to form C in this case. Okay, then three C one is three. There are three ways to form B, and for every B, there is only one case of A. Okay, so your total kitna ho gaya? Seven seven plus nine sixteen plus three nineteen. This itself is nineteen. Okay, this is not the final answer. This itself is nineteen. Now, what can be case number two is that C contains only two elements out of three. So C can be chosen in three C two. Say for example, you select two comma three, yeah, etc. Any two out of three. Any two out of three. So C now contains only two elements. So what is the possibility for B? Okay, number one, B can contain both the elements. Okay, so that is two C two. Okay, now selection is out out of two. Okay, selection is out of two. Or B can take any one element. Okay, two C one. Now with respect to this, how many cases for A? Now if B contains, as explained here, if B contains only one element, A can also contain only that one element, na? नीचे जा नहीं सकते सबसे नल सेट नॉट अलाउड 
ठीक है देन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू टू सी टू इफ बी कंटेन्स टू एलिमेंट्स ओके लाइक टू कॉमा थ्री ए कैन टेक बोथ दीज एलिमेंट्स ओके ए कैन कंटेन बोथ दीज एलिमेंट्स टू सी टू और ए कैन कंटेन एनी वन आउट ऑफ दीज टू ए कैन बी लेस देन और इक्वल टू बी ओके सो नाउ थ्री सी टू वॉट इज थ्री सी टू इसका काउंट लिखेंगे हम वॉट इज थ्री सी टू इज थ्री ओके नाउ For every value of C, how many possibilities in B here? Two C two, that is one. And for every such possibility of B, there are this is one plus two, three possibility in A. Okay. Plus again start C, three possibilities. Okay. Then here B may two possibility and A may one possibility. This is total three three plus two. This is this itself is fifteen. Okay. Ah, uh, last case would be. Last case would be okay. C itself containing okay only one element. Okay. Say for example, it contains only the number two. Now b is less than equal to a, less than equal to c. Okay, so b can also contain only this number. Less than to ho nahi sakta. Null set not allowed. Okay, and if b has only one element, okay, c can also sorry c nahi a, c a can also contain only that one element. Okay, so here here the answer is three into. Three because of C, any one element, na, like two or three or five. But for every element in C, there can be only one count, one possibility for A and one possibility for B. Three into one into one, this is going to be three. Okay, so okay, the final answer should be okay. That is total cases nineteen plus fifteen plus three. This is thirty-seven. Okay, I IIC have not given any final official answer. They have only put it as MTA because thirty-seven match nahi ho raha. Okay, so. 37 is what is according to me the final answer. ठीक है, although it was MTA but yeah, discuss तो question तो valid है ना, we can discuss it. We need to learn. The reason we are putting up the solution uh, PDF, the video is to make you learn some, you know, uh, you know, and analyze कि how the questions were. चलो, next one. Another question MTA marks to all. Okay, as I told you, two questions marks to all. Four equilateral triangles are used to form a regular closed three-dimensional object by joining along the edges. Okay, now whenever Okay, you join four equilateral triangles. Okay, you what? What is that three-dimensional object that you are going to form? It's going to be, it's going to be regular tetrahedron. What you are going to form is a regular tetrahedron. What is the angle between two faces? Maybe took the op they took the option as angle between any two ed edges or what? Angle between any two faces. No option match. नहीं करेगा. This is again marks to all, but क्वेश्चन तो वैलिड है लेट अस डिस्कस इट लेट अस डिस्कस इट इट हैज अ वेरी इजी डिस्कशन देखते हैं यहां पे सो दिस इज व्हाट इज अ रेगुलर टेट्राहेड्रॉन ओके जॉइंड बाय फोर इक्विलैटरल ट्रायंगल्स ओके नाउ डियर व्हेनेवर यू हैव द फोर व्हेनेवर यू हैव अ इक्विलैटरल ट्रायंगल ना व्हेनेवर यू हैव दिस इक्विलैटरल ट्रायंगल ओके सपोज दिस इज ए बी सी Uh, this is the midpoint D. Now equilateral triangle, all sides and all angles are equal. Okay, so this is also A. Okay, so how much is this equal to? Okay, this is the half. This is A by two. Now what is the height of equilateral triangle? Okay, the height you should know for equilateral triangle is root three by two A. ठीक है? अगर नहीं ध्यान है, no problem. You can any time calculate the height. Okay, you can any time calculate the height. Okay, this is what is known as the height. You can any time calculate the height by Pythagoras theorem. It is nothing but under root of a square. ये hypotenuse हो गया, ये base हो गया, minus a square by four. Okay, you will get it as root three by two a. ठीक है, done है. Okay, now let's take the midpoint here O. Okay, now for a equilateral triangle, what we should know is that okay, the centroid, ortho center, everything, all these things are equal, and it divides the median. This is also the median. This is also the altitude. Okay, and If I consider this to be centroid, it is going to divide the median is to in the ratio of one is to two, one is to two. Okay, that means OD is to OA is in the ratio one is to two. Okay, so how much is going to be? Maybe I will require OD to solve it. Okay, how much is going to be OD? Okay, this is in the ratio one is to two. So total part three will be. OD is one out of three. OD is one out of three of the total height and total height is. Root three by two a, so this is going to become a root three by three cancel करके denominator will be root three. So a upon two root three. ठीक है. Now let's come to this picture. Question is angle between any two faces. Angle between any two faces. This is what is the angle between the two faces. Correct ना? भाई this is one of the face C dear. 
this is one of the phase and one of the phase I have taken to be base. Since all four are equilateral triangle, there is a symmetry. You can calculate angle between any two phases. Okay. So, I have taken one as base and one is this slant phase. Okay. One is this slant phase. Okay. This is what is the angle between two phases. Okay. And what is the idea I am going to apply here? The angle between the two phases, let us take as cos theta and cos theta is known as what? Base divided by hypotenuse. Now base, okay, centroid to the side perpendicular, that is this wala formula, one third of the height, that is a by 2 root 3, a by 2 root 3 and hypotenuse, what is this? This is the hypotenuse and hypotenuse is equal to, okay, the altitude of the equilateral triangle, okay, which is root 3 by 2 a, okay, so a 2, 2 cancel, a, a cancel, I am getting the cos theta is 1 by root 3 and root 3, so that is going to be 1 by 3, okay, so theta cos inverse of 1 by 3, okay, approximately 70.53 degree will come, approximately 70.53, let me just check it, yeah, 70.528, 70.53 is correct answer, okay, 70.53, none of the option is given, okay, okay, that's it guys, so, this is what is the correct answer. Two questions MTA, but yeah, we have also discussed both these MTS, MTA. Okay, so yeah, that's it. This is uh, 10 questions of aptitude. Now, Chandrasekhar sir will be joining to discuss up questions from fluids and then Dheeraj sir, Vipin sir, everybody is going to continue and I will complete paper discussed with you. Okay, thank you and you know, carry forward uh, with the discussions from Chandrasekhar sir. Thank you very much, Rakesh sir. And hello everyone, I Chandrasekhar would be going to discuss the solution to fluid mechanics, thermodynamics and the heat transfer questions which had been asked in GATE 2024 mechanical paper. So there were three questions from the fluid mechanics, three questions from the thermodynamics and six questions from the heat transfer. So let us start with the fluid mechanics first. This was one of the question asked for one mark. The question says the velocity field of a two dimensional incompressible flow is given by this expression where i cap and j cap denote the unit vectors in the x and y direction respectively. If the value of this, this is unknown v x y, if the value of this v x comma 0 is cos hyperbolic x, then what is the value of v 0 comma minus 1? Simple question based on the continuity equation. So, if we use the continuity equation for two dimensional incompressible flow, continuity equation, do you guys remember? Continuity equation for two dimensional incompressible flow. The continuity equation says del u by del x plus del v by del y is the equal to 0. So, put the value of u and v. If we compare this velocity profile, with the general velocity profile where we can write the velocity vector v is equal to u i cap plus v j cap. So, from here the value of u is equal to 2 sin hyperbolic x and the value of v is v x comma y. Right? Put the value v is v only. So, put the values of u and v here. So, our expression will be del by del x u is 2 sin hyperbolic x plus del v by del y is equal to 0. And what is the differentiation of uh, sin hyperbolic x? It will be 2, it becomes cos hyperbolic x plus del v by del y is equal to 0. So, from here we can say del v by del y is equal to minus 2 cos hyperbolic x or we can say del v is equal to minus 2 cos hyperbolic x into del y. If we integrate this with respect to y, if we integrate with respect to y, then our expression will be v is equal to it will become minus 2 cos hyperbolic x. Integration of cos hyperbolic x is sin hyperbolic x. 
sorry we need to integrate with respect to y so it will be because it is a function of x it will be minus 2 cos hyperbolic x into y plus the constant because we are integrating with respect to y then the constant can be a function of x this is our expression anybody is having any doubt up to this i hope it is clear now to find the value of fx what we can do is then if we so at at x comma 0 v is cos hyperbolic x at x comma 0 v is equal to cos hyperbolic x put the value x comma 0 if we put y is equal to 0 then that will become fx isn't it at x comma 0 at x comma 0 value of v will be cos hyperbolic x so fx is equal to cos hyperbolic x so our expression put the value here so v will be equal to minus 2 cos hyperbolic x into y plus cos of hyperbolic x right so it will be cos of if we take cos hyperbolic x common then v will be equal to cos of hyperbolic x into it will be minus 2y plus 1 into minus 2y plus 1 and another condition the, we need to find out the value of v at 0 comma minus 1 at 0 comma minus 1 so what is the value of v v will be equal to if we put x is equal to 0 so it will become cos hyperbolic 0 multiplied by multiplied by minus 2y plus 1 y is equal to minus 1 minus 2 into minus 1 plus 1 this will be the expression cos hyperbolic 0 is 1 into minus 2 into minus 1 is 2 plus 1 that is equal to 3 so the value of v at 0 comma minus 1 is 3 so the answer to this question is option a 3 all right let us move to the next one the next question was from the dimensional and model analysis. A liquid fills a horizontal capillary tube whose one end is dipped in a large pool of the liquid. Experiment shows that the distance L, L is the distance traveled by the liquid meniscus inside the capillary in time t is given by this expression. Where gamma is the surface tension, R is the inner radius, it is the radius of the capillary and mu is the dynamic viscosity of the liquid. If k is the dimensionless number, dimensionless constant, then the exponent a will be how much very simple question so from here what we can say l is directly proportional to gamma to the power a r to the power b viscosity to the power c and t to the power 1 by 2 isn't it and write the dimensional formula on both the side it, write the dimensional formula dimensional formula for the length is m0 l1 t0 is given by gamma is newton per meter or kg per second square so it will be m1 t minus 2 to the power a r is the radius that is l1 to the power b and viscosity is kg per meter second m1 l minus 1 t minus 1 m1 l minus 1 t minus 1 to the power c and time is t to the power 1 by 2 separate the powers of mlt on both sides lhs will become m to the power this will be a plus c then l to the power b minus c right and t to the power minus 2a minus c plus 1 by 2 and lhs will be m0 l1 t0 so, if we equate powers of m, l and t on both the sides, if we equate the powers of m, l and t, so a plus b will be 0, a plus c will be equal to 0, the another equation is b minus c is equal to 1 and minus 2a minus c 
plus 1 by 2 is also equal to 0. From here, C is equal to minus A. Yes or no? And put the value of C here. If you put the value of C here, that is minus A. So, it will be minus 2 A minus C, that is minus A plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is equal to 0. So, it will become minus 2 A plus A plus 1 by 2 is equal to 0 or minus A plus 1 by 2 is equal to 0. So, the value of A is equal to 1 by 2 or 0 0.5. The value of A will be 0 0.5. So, the answer to this question is 0 0.5 or 1 by 2. The last question from the fluid mechanics, very, very beautiful question. MCQ, but for 2 marks. So, earlier this question, earlier answer sheet had given the answer to this question as both the statements are correct. But later the gate committee uh, changed the answer for this question. They had said first is false and the second is true. Let us understand how. The question says in the pipe network shown in the figure, figure in the, on the other side, uh, other slide. All the pipes have same cross section. It means the diameter or the cross sectional area is constant for all and can be assumed to have the same friction factor. Friction factor is also same for each and every pipe. The pipes connecting the points W, N and S with the point J have an equal length L. If you see, this is the J and point N, W and S, these are having equal lengths, already mentioned, L. The pipe connecting point J and E has a length 10 L. The pressure at the ends N, E, S are equal. Pressure at N, pressure at E, pressure at S are equal. Are same. The pressures are same. Right? The flow rate in the pipe connecting W and J is Q. That is given. This is Q. Flow rate is Q between W and J. Uh, assume that the fluid flow is steady, incompressible and the process pressure losses at the pipe entrance and the junctions are negligible. Consider the following instrument. The flow rate in pipe connecting J and E is Q by 21. J and E. The flow rate in pipe J and E is 21, Q by 21 and the pressure difference between J and N is equal to the pressure difference between J and E. These are the two statements which of them are correct. There are multiple options, four options. So, the correct answer to this one is the statement 1 is false and 2 is true. Let us try to understand how. J is the junction. We can call this to be the junction. So, junction is the point where two or more pipes meet. Can we, if we call it this point to be J1, let me call this point to be J2 and let me call this point to be J3. So, J1, J2, J3 because J is a junction and the energy at a junction Ej is equal to, we can call it as Ej1, is equal to Ej2, is equal to Ej3 remains constant. Energy at a junction remain constant because energy is a point function. Energy is a point function. So, energy will be same. So, J1 is the in entry point of pipe Jn, J2 is the entry point of pipe uh, Js and J3 is the entry point of pipe Je, right? Now, <clears throat> because pipe Jn, this pipe is having constant diameter, diameter is constant. So, according to continuity equation, velocity will also be constant and Z is also same because it is a horizontal plane. The entire pipe network in a, is in, in a horizontal plane. So, Z is also constant. So, the velocity and that is the kinetic energy and potential energy are constant in each and every pipe. Similarly, if we talk about this pipe, here also diameter is constant throughout. So, we can say velocity will be constant and Z will also be constant. There is no change in potential energy and there is no change in there is no change in potential energy, there is no change in kinetic energy. Similarly, pipe 3, 
is also having the constant diameter throughout it is uniform flow so velocity will remain constant we can call it as v3 here the velocity is called as v1 let us say here the velocity is called as v2 here z2 here z1 here z3 z3 will also be constant so because of friction or because of the friction between the point j and n or j and s or j and e there will be energy loss and the energy loss is nothing but the pressure energy loss because there is no change in kinetic energy there is no change in potential energy so it is the only the pressure energy which decreases in the flow direction to compensate the loss are you getting it so we can say because we can say hl1 is equal to pj1 minus pn the loss hl2 by rho g let me write it as by rho g also by rho g and hl2 the loss in pipe 2 this is pipe number 1 this is pipe number 2 this is let us a pipe number 3 hl2 will be equal to p j2 minus p s by rho g and hl3 will be equal to p j3 minus p e by rho g do you guys agree to it because the potential energy remains constant throughout and the kinetic energy is also constant in each and every pipe so the pressure energy will compensate the energy loss as simple as that so the fr fr frictional head loss in each and every pipe is nothing but the pressure difference and we also know and we know pj1 is equal to pj2 is equal to pj3 is equal to pj3 is equal to constant that is pj because it is a j is a junction so pressure will be same at each and every point or uh, at the junction the pressure will remain constant and it is given pn is equal to ps is equal to pe that is given in the question the pressure will be same at h n s and e pressure will be same the pipe connecting point the pressure at the ends n e s are equal isn't it so if we put these values so do you agree denominator is constant denominator is same if we put the value pj1 minus pn will be equal to pj2 minus ps will be equal to pj3 minus pe that will be constant so what we got here is so we can say pj1 minus or pj minus we can say pj minus pn will be equal to pj minus ps will be equal to pj minus pe yes or no so the statement 2 if you read the pressure difference between j and n is equal to the pressure difference between j and e that is true statement number 2 is true now let us talk about the statement number 1 i hope this is clear now if we talk about the statement number 1 hl1 is equal to hl2 is equal to hl3 we can write it as f then l1 then q1 square upon 12.1 d1 to the power 5 is equal to f l2 q2 square upon 12.1 d2 to the power 5 is equal to d2 to the power 5 is equal to f l3 q3 square upon 12.1 d3 to the power 5 diameter d1 is equal to d2 is equal to d3 given and l1 is equal to l2 l3 will be equal to l1 is equal to l2 is equal to l is equal to l and l3 is equal to 10 l this is given this is pipe number 3 this is pipe number 1 this is pipe number 2 and friction factor is same for all the pipes so from here what we can say if we put the values here friction factor will be same in all the pipes l1 and l l2 are equal so it will be uh, d1 denominator is same so we can say l into q1 square is equal to l into q2 square is equal to 10 l into q3 square or we can say 
L L L getting cancel out. So Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to under root 10 Q3. Also from the continuity equation, this is the flow rate entering. This is the flow rate going Q1 is going here. Q2 is going here. Q3 is going here. From the continuity equation, if we write the continuity equation, continuity equation, sigma q at a junction will be equal to 0 or we can say sigma q entering into a junction will be equal to sigma q leaving from the junction. Entering will be equal to leaving. So, q is the entering. So, we can say q will be equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3. So, what is q1? We know Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to under root of 10 Q3. So, Q is equal to under root of 10 Q3 plus root of 10 Q3 plus Q3. Or we can say Q is equal to Q3 into 2 root 10 plus 1. Or we can say Q3 will be equal to Q upon under root of 2 root 10 plus 1. This will be the value of Q3. So, the statement number 1 says the flow rate in the pipe connecting J and E that is Q3 is Q by 21 that is incorrect. So, only statement 2 is true, 1 is false. That is how you can find out. Now, let us move to the thermodynamics questions. Question number 14 for 1 mark. The question says a furnace can supply heat steadily at 1200 Kelvin at a rate of 24,000 kilojoule per minute. 24,000 kilojoule per minute. If we convert it into kilowatt, so minute can be converted into second. So that will be equal to 400 kilojoule per second or kilowatt. Yes or no? You should take care of the unit. The maximum amount of power in kilowatt we need maximum amount of power in kilowatt that can be produced by using the heat supplied by this furnace in an environment at 300 Kelvin. If we want the maximum amount of power, then we must attach a reversible heat engine, isn't it? It should be reversible heat engine. This is Q2 and the environment temperature is 300 Kelvin. So, this will be maximum power produced. That is the question, right? So, T1 is given, this is T2 and it is a reversible heat engine. So, efficiency of a reversible heat engine is given by 1 minus T2 by T1 that is equal to W upon Q1. So, the objective is to find out W. So, W is equal to Q1, Q1 is 400 into 1 minus T2 by T1. T2 is 300, T1 is 1200. So, it will be 400 multiplied by 1 minus 1 by 4 that is 3 by 4. So, it will be 300 kilowatt. Yes or no? The maximum work which can be produced is 300 kilowatt. The unit was in kilojoule per minute. Let us move to the next one. Question number 15. A piston cylinder arrangement shown in the figure has a stopper located at 2 meter above the base. This, this is the stopper. The cylinder initially contains air at 140 kilopascal P1 and at temperature T1 350 degree Celsius and the piston is resting in equilibrium at a position which is further 1 meter above the stops here. That is the initial state or initial position of the piston which is 1 meter from the stop. The system is now cooled to the ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Now there is a cooling takes place. Heat is given out. Then what will happen? The piston will start moving in downward direction. <coughs> the, the cooling will take place until the temperature becomes 25 degrees Celsius. Or this is environment temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Consider air to be an ideal gas with a value of gas constant 0.287, the absolute velocity of value of the specific work done during the process in kilojoule per kg is mass will be taken as 1 kilogram. 
m to be taken as 1 kg of air. Now what will happen if we draw PV diagram? There are two processes which are going to happen. One is when the piston is moving 1 meter from the initial position in downward direction, then it is a constant pressure. It is constant pressure heat rejection. So, 1 to 2 is a constant pressure heat rejection 1 to 2 like this. It is a constant pressure. Then once the piston comes at this location, then the piston will not be moving further. The piston will not be able to move further. Then what will happen? Then the, the piston will be or the, the air will be having the constant volume heat rejection now. 2 to 3 is constant volume heat rejection and 1 to 2 is constant pressure heat rejection. So, this is how the PV diagram will be. Now, the question is the work done. Do you agree? Between 2 to 3 there is no work done. Between 1 to 2 there is a work done by the, uh, work done by the system. Work done on the system, sorry. There will be work done on the system because it will be negative work. So, W total can be written as W1 to 2 plus W2 to 3 and W2 to 3 will be equal to 0 because it is a constant volume process and what is W1 to 2? W1 to 2 is equal to W total that is equal to W1 to 2 is equal to P1 V1 minus P2 V2 or we can write MR into T1 minus T2 T1 minus T2. Now our objective M is 1, R is given, T1 is known to us. Now our objective is to find out T2. This is equation number 1. And how to find out T2? To find out T2, 1 to 2 is constant volume. Sorry, 1 to 2 is constant pressure process. 1 to 2 is constant pressure process. So we can say Temperature is directly proportional to volume or we can say T2 by T1 is equal to V2 by V1. What is V2? This is V1 position and here it will be V2 position. So, V2 is equal to area of the piston into height H. H2, this is H2. And what is V1? Area of the piston into height H1. H1 is this. Total height. So, H area area getting cancelled out h2 is equal to 2 meter h1 is 3 meter 2 by 3 so t2 will be equal to t1 into 2 by 3 what is t1 initial temperature is 350 so it will be 350 plus 273 into 2 by 3 kelvin so we will get the value of t2 as how much is that 350 plus 273 into 2 divide by 3. Your answer will be 415 Kelvin. Something around 415.33. 415.33 Kelvin will be the value of T2. Put in equation number 1. Put the value in equation number 1. So, the work is equal to mass into R 0.287 into 350 plus 273. 623 uh, t2 minus t1 na? t2 is 415.33 minus 623 that will be kilojoule per kg so put the value you will get the answer 0 0.287 to 0 0.287 59.6 59.6 6 kilojoule per kg will be the work done on the system that is negative means work is done on the system. Work is done on the system. Right. Now, the next one from the thermodynamics again simple question asked NAT for 2 marks. A heat pump is the dri driven by the work output of a heat engine. This is the heat engine as shown in the figure. The heat engine extracts 150 kilojoule of heat. This is let us say Q1. This is temperature T1. 
from the source at 1000 kelvin the heat pump absorbs heat from the ambient at 280 kelvin this is let us say t3 this is absorbing heat let me call it as q3 and delivers heat to the room which is maintained at 300 kelvin so this is let us say q4 and this is let us say q2 and work the work output from the heat engine will be utilized completely for the consider uh, completely for running the heat pump right consider the combined system to be ideal it means all are reversible processes or all both the cycles are reversible cycles the total amount of heat delivered to the room together by the heat engine and the heat pump room is at 300 kelvin so uh, our objective is to find out q2 plus q4 in kilojoule will be how much that is our question so because for the heat engine if we write for the heat engine that is the reversible heat engine we can say w upon q1 this is q1 is equal to 1 minus t2 by t1 this is t1 this is t2 so we can say w is equal to q1 that is 150 into 1 minus 300 by 1000 so from here we will get w w is equal to 150 into 1 minus 3 by 10 1 minus 0.3 that is 0 0.7 kilojoule the value will be 150 into 0 0.7 105 kilojoule that is w and what is q2 and q2 is equal to q1 minus w that is 150 minus 105 what is the value of q2 q2 will come out to be 150 minus 105 45 kilo joule now if we talk about the heat pump that is the thermal efficiency of a reversible heat engine this is the thermal efficiency now if we talk about the heat pump or heat pump that is the reversible heat pump top that is q3 that is let us say q4 cop is equal to the desired output q4 upon w that is equal to t t4 is equal to t2 let me call it as t4 or t2 t4 upon w is equal to q4 minus q3 so t4 minus t3 that will be cop for a reversible cycle so we can find out q4 from here q4 will be equal to w or what is the value of w Q4 is equal to W, W is equal to 105 into T4 that is 300 upon T4 minus T3, 300 minus 280. So it will be 105 into 300 divided by 20. So Q4 will be equal to 105 into 15, 105 into 15, 1575, 1575 kilojoule. So Q4 will be equal to 1575 kilojoule, Q2 is 45 kilojoule. So Q4 plus Q2, so Q2 plus Q4 is equal to 45 plus 1575 kilojoule. What is the answer? 1620. The answer will be 1620. 1620 kilo joule. So that is the total heat, uh, total amount of heat which is delivered to the room. 1620 will be the answer to this one. Now the questions from the heat transfer. Six questions were asked from the heat transfer. Question number 17 says a plain solid slab of thickness L shown in the figure has thermal conductivity K that varies with the spatial coordinate X as K is equal to AX, A plus BX. This is how the thermal conductivity varies with X where A R, B are positive constant. The slab walls are maintained at fixed temperatures of T. At X is equal to 0, the temperature is 0 and at X is equal to the temperature is T naught which is more than temperature at x is equal to 0. The slab has no internal heat sources considering one dimensional heat transfer which one of the following plots quantitatively depicts the steady state. If there is a steady state q stored will be equal to 0. 
देर इज नो इंटरनल हीट जनरेशन देर इज नो इंटरनल हीट सोर्स इट मीन क्यू जनरेशन विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो फ्रॉम द एनर्जी इक्वेशन वी कैन से क्यू इन इज इक्वल टू क्यू आउट इज इक्वल टू कॉन्स्टेंट राइट क्यू विल बी कॉन्स्टेंट सो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कर्व रिप्रेजेंट द टेम्परेचर वर्सेज एक्स ग्राफ सो वी कैन से क्यू इज गल्ड कॉन्स्टेंट एंड क्यू इज गिवन बाई माइनस के इंटू ए इंटू डी टी बाई डी एक्स दैट विल बी कॉन्स्टेंट सो डी टी बाई डी एक्स इज इनवर्सली प्रपोज टू के कैन वी से डी टी बाई डी एक्स इज इनवर्सली प्रपोज टू थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी डी टी बाई डी एक्स इज द स्लोप सो डी टी बाई डी एक्स इज इनवर्सली प्रपोज टू थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी एंड के इज गिवन बाई ए प्लस बी एक्स सो एज एक्स इंक्रीजेज एज एक्स इंक्रीजेज वॉट इज हैपनिंग टू के के विल इंक्रीज एंड वॉट विल हैपन टू स्लोप स्लोप विल डिक्रीज सो एज एक्स इंक्रीजेज स्लोप ऑफ द कर विल डिक्रीज सो सी कैन नॉट बी ट्रू हियर द स्लोप इज कॉन्स्टेंट स्लोप इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो दैट कैन नॉट बी ट्रू हियर द स्लोप इज इंक्रीजिंग इन एक्स डायरेक्शन स्लोप इज इंक्रीजिंग सो दैट इज ऑल्सो नॉट करेक्ट ए इज करेक्ट आंसर बिकॉज द स्लोप इज डिक्रीजिंग डी टी बाई डी एक्स इज डिक्रीजिंग एज एक्स इंक्रीजेज सो दिस इज हाउ द कर विल लुक लाइक क्यू विल रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट बट द टेम्परेचर प्रोफाइल विल नॉट बी लीनियर इफ देर इज ए वेरिएबल थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी द नेक्स्ट वन क्वेश्चन नंबर एटीन Consider incompressible laminar flow over a flat plate with free stream velocity of u infinity. It is uh, external force convection. The Nusselt number corresponding to this flow velocity is n u one. If the free stream velocity is doubled, so for laminar flow over a flat plate, for laminar force convection, for laminar force convection, laminar external force convection. laminar external post convection nusel number is proportional to renold number to the power 1 by 2 into prandtl number to the power 1 by 3 prandtl number is constant and renold number is given by rho u infinity x by mu so renold number is directly proportional to u infinity so from here we can say nusel number is proportional to renold number to the power 1 by 2 and we can say nusselt number is proportional to u infinity to the power 1 by 2 that will be the expression so we want nu2 by nu1 so if we want nu2 by nu1 nu2 by nu1 is equal to u infinity 2 by u infinity 1 the u infinity 2 is becoming twice of u infinity 1 and then u infinity 1 sorry to the power 1 by 2 To the power one by two, so u infinity one u infinity getting cancel out, so it will be under root two. Under root two will be the correct answer. B will be the right answer. B will be the correct answer, right? Let us move to the next one. This was wonderful question. Earlier, there was the answer given to this question was option D, but they had changed the answer. it became mta marks to all the final answer to this one is marks to all now see consider a the question says consider a hydrodynamically fully developed laminar flow through a circular pipe it is internal through a circular pipe With the flow along the axis that is jet direction. In the following statement, T is the temperature of the fluid, T is the variable temperature, and T W is the wall temperature, and T M is the bulk temperature, bulk mean temperature of the fluid. Which one of the following statement is true? For constant wall temperature, look. If you see, if wall temperature is constant, for T W is constant, then the temperature profile will be like this. This is the wall temperature T W is constant, and the fluid temperature will be like this. This is T M. This is the curve for mean temperature, bulk mean temperature. So it is exponential. 
TW is greater than TM. TW is greater than T. So this is exponential, which is this is how the curve. This is exponential curve. So if TM is exponential function of Z, so we can say DTM by DZ that is the slope is also exponential. The slope will also be exponential for TW is constant. For constant wall temperature, DTM by DZ is constant. So implies Tm is a linear function of Z. That is not correct. For constant wall temperature, mean temperature is not a linear function of Z. If you see option D, if you read the option D for constant wall temperature when Tw is greater than Tm of the duct, Tm dTm by dz that is the slope increases exponentially with the distance along the x direction. The problem in this statement is increases. If you see the slope, this is the slope. Slope is more initially, slope is less. So the slope is decreasing exponentially. The slope of Tm versus Z, this is Z direction and this is let us say Tm. So the slope of Tm versus Z is decreasing exponentially along Z direction. That is why option D is also incorrect. Now, people got confused in the statement B. For a thermally fully developed flow, if it is earlier it was hydrodynamically fully developed laminar flow. Now for the thermally fully developed flow, del T by del Z is equal to 0. Here there is a confusion with the student. Look, there are two situations. For hydrodynamically, for hydrodynamically, fully developed for hydrodynamically fully developed flow we know u is not a function of z or we can say del u by del z becomes zero or we can write del by del z we can write it as u minus zero upon u infinity minus zero is equal to zero isn't it we can write this way because u infinity is constant so for hydrodynamically fully developed flow but for thermally fully developed flow if you relate with this for thermally fully developed flow for the thermally fully developed flow we can say del by del z then t minus t w upon t m minus t w is equal to zero this is true but here because t m is also variable if you see if you see here Tm is also variable that is exponentially in z direction. So we can say del T by del z may not be 0. Del T by del z may not be 0 but this will be 0. I hope you understand this. So del T by del z is not 0 for thermally fully developed. So B is also incorrect. And if you see Nusselt number varies linearly along the z direction for a th thermally fully developed flow because it is the laminar flow given in the statement itself. So for laminar fully developed flow, for thermally fully developed flow and it is laminar, if it is laminar, then Nusselt number will be constant. The value will be 4.36. If Q dash is constant, the value will be 3.66. If the wall temperature is constant but nusel number will be constant for the laminar fully developed flow in a pipe so nusel number will not be variable so option c is also incorrect so not a single option is correct in the given question that is why they had decided to give marks to everyone the next question question number 20 is from the heat exchanger look a condenser is used as a heat exchanger. Condenser means hot fluid is undergoing a phase change. It was asked for two marks. When a hot fluid is undergoing a phase change in a large steam power plant in which steam is condensed to liquid water. The condenser in a shell and tube type of heat exchanger which consists of one shell and 20,000 tubes. Water flows through each of the tubes. Cold fluid is flowing through the tube and hot fluid which is undergoing a phase change is flowing through the shell. 
water is flowing at the rate of 1 kg per second with an inlet temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, the steam in the condenser shell condenses at the rate of 430. If we draw the diagram, this is the hot fluid. It is, it is having 430 kilo, kilogram per second mass flow rate of the hot fluid. Right? And this is the cold fluid. And mass flow rate of the cold fluid is 1 kg per second. And there are 20,000 number of tubes. Right? So it is entering at 30 degrees Celsius. And the stream is getting con condensed at 50 degrees Celsius. 50 degrees Celsius. So TH1 is equal to TH2. And this is TC1 and TC2 is unknown. This is how the temperature profile will be drawn. If the heat of vaporization is the latent heat of vaporization, this is latent heat is 2.326 megajoule per kg. For 1 kg, 2.326 uh, megajoule of heat is released for conversion of steam into water. And the specific heat of water Cp is 4 kilojoule per kg Kelvin Cp for the cold fluid. The effectiveness of the heat exchanger is what is the effectiveness? Effectiveness is given by Q actual upon Q maximum. What is Q actual? Can we write mass flow rate of hot fluid into latent heat upon what is Q maximum? C minimum into TH1 minus TC1. Yes or no? And C minimum is equal to CC because CH is infinite. Hot fluid is undergoing a phase change. So if you put the value, what is the mass flow rate of hot fluid? 430 kilojoule per second 430 into latent heat if we convert it into kilojoule per kg uh, 2323 2.323 into 10 to the power 3 kilojoule per kg so this will be kilojoule and c minimum is mass flow rate that is one mass flow rate of water one because there are 20,000 tubes into 4 is the specific heat into th1 that is 50 minus 30 that will also become kilojoule. This will be kilojoule per second. This will also be kilojoule per second. So if you simplify this, then your answer will be 0 0.625. The range given was 0 0.5992, 0 0.63. This was the range. So the effectiveness of the heat exchanger is 0 0.625. Question number 21. This type of question was asked earlier also in previous question paper. Consider the hemispherical furnace of diameter 6 meter. What is the radius? Radius will be 3 meter with a flat base. This is the base which is flat. The dome of the furnace has an emissivity of 0.7 and the flat base is a black body. This is the black body. The base and the dome are maintained at uniform temperature of 300. The base, this is 300 Kelvin and this is 1200 Kelvin. Under steady state condition, the rate of radiation heat transfer from the dome to the base. Let me call dome to be 1. So, T1 is given and the base is let us say 2. So, T2 is given. So, epsilon 1 is equal to 0 0.7. Epsilon 2 is equal to 1. Right? And in kilowatt, what will be the rate of heat transfer? So, Q1 to 2 net if you write sigma T1 to the power 4 minus T2 to the power 4. Upon there will be 3 resistances. 1 is the surface resistance epsilon 1 a1 plus the space resistance 1 upon a1 f1 to 2 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 upon epsilon 2 a2 these should be the three resistances right because the base is a black body epsilon 2 is equal to 1 this will be 0 this will be 0 so our expression for q1 to 2 is q1 to 2 net will be given by if we multiply and divide uh, multiply the numerator and denominator with a1 so it will be sigma a1 t1 to the power 4 minus t2 to the power 4 upon 1 minus epsilon 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon f1 to 2 now how to find out the value of f1 to 2 now to find out the value of f1 to 2 this is surface 1 this is 2 this is an enclosure so f2 to 1 plus f2 to 2 is equal to 1 that is the enclosure theorem and F222, that is the flat surface, the self-shape factor of a flat base will be equal to 1. 
so we can say f2 to 1 is equal to 1 and a1 f1 to 2 that is the reciprocity theorem if we apply the reciprocity theorem a1 f1 to 2 is equal to a2 f2 to 1 isn't it f2 to 1 is 1 so f1 to 2 is equal to simply a2 by a1 what is a2 pi r square because it is a flat base circular base and what is a1 that is a uh, hemisphere 2 pi r square so it will be 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 f1 to 2 is 0 0.5 put the value here you will get the answer so q122 net is equal to sigma 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 into area a1 this is surface a1 so into 2 pi r square 3 square into t1 that is 1200 to the power 4 minus 300 to the power 4 divided by 1 minus epsilon 1 epsilon 1 is 0.7 so 1 minus 0.7 upon 0.7 plus 1 upon 0.5 if you simplify this then you will get your answer in joule so if you sim solve this then your answer will be coming out to be in kilo joule per second it will be in joule per second so it will be 2727.6 kilo joule per second or kilowatt you just have to simplify this will give you the answer what so divide by 1000 will give you kilowatt so this will be q122 net 2727.6 to the nearest integer is 2727 kilowatt question number 22 the last question right consider a slab of 20 mm thickness the thickness is l is 20 mm there is a uniform heat generation of 100 megawatt per meter cube that is q dot inside the slab the left and right faces of the slab are maintained at 150 that is t1 and 110 degrees celsius respectively the plate has a constant thermal conductivity of 200 watt per meter kelvin k is given thermal conductivity k is given and consider one study one dimensional uh, steady state one dimensional heat conduction the location of the maximum temperature from the left face if we draw the temperature profile we draw the temperature profile 150 is more this will be like this this is the point we can call it as x maximum this will be x maximum where the temperature is maximum this is how the temperature profile will be drawn so how to analyze it if you use governing differential equation here q will not be constant why because q generation is not zero so q is not constant so what we do is we cannot use Fourier law, we will go with the governing differential equation for conduction. So, if we use governing differential equation, so d square t by dx square plus q dot by k is equal to 0. If we integrate once, then we will get dt by dx plus q dot x by k is equal to c1. If we integrate again, then t plus q dot x square by 2k is equal to c1 x plus c2 this is our expression so to find out c1 and c2 use the boundary condition now c1 and c2 are unknown c1 and c2 are unknowns use boundary conditions and what are the boundary conditions at x is equal to 0, this is x is equal to 0, this is x is equal to 20 mm. At x is equal to 0, t is equal to 150 degrees Celsius. So, if we put, if at x is equal to 0, x is equal to 0, t is equal to 150. So, c2 will be equal to 150. And at x is equal to 20 mm, 20 into 10 to the power 3 meter, temperature is equal to 110. So, temperature is 110 is equal, sorry, 110 plus 110 plus q dot. What is q dot? 100 into 10 to the power 6 into x square. That is 20 into 10 to the power. It will be 20 into 10 to the power minus 3. Minus 3 square q dot x square by 2k. 2 into k is 200 is equal to c1 
is unknown x is 20 into 10 to the power minus 3 plus c2 is 150 so if you simplify this this 10 to the power 3 square will get cancelled out so it is 110 plus it will be 100 so it will be 20 into 20 400 by 4 is equal to c1 into 20 into 10 to the power minus 3 plus 150 if you simplify this this will be 100 so 110 plus 100 minus 150 is equal to c1 into 0 0.02 so from here c1 will come out to be 210 minus 150 210 minus 150 that is 60 upon 0 0.02 60 upon 0 0.02 so if we get t1 and t2 put in this equation for temperature to be maximum for temperature to be maximum dt by dx must be 0. So, we know dt by dx plus q dot x by k is equal to c1. So, if we put this dt by dx to be 0, so 0 plus q dot this will give you x maximum by k is equal to c1 and what is c1? So, x maximum will be equal to c1 into k upon q dot. So, x maximum will be equal to what is c1? c1 is equal to 60 upon 20 into 10 to the power minus 3. We can call it as 60 upon 20 into 10 to the power minus 3 also. Into k that is 200 upon q dot 100 into 10 to the power 6. That will be meter. So, if you simplify this. this will get cancel out if you simplify this then what you will get 10 to the power 3 here so this will be 2 so it will be q dot x by k c1 x 60 into 100 sorry it will be 1 100 sorry it will be 10 this will be getting cancelled out so it is 60 upon 10 to the power this will also get cancelled out so it will be 6 upon 10 to the power 3 6 upon 10 to the power 3 meter or 6 into if we convert it into millimeter 10 to the power 3 mm so this 10 to the power 3 getting cancelled out so it will be 6 mm 6 mm will be the point where the temperature is maximum it will be 6 millimeter we can easily find out the maximum temperature also. So these were the questions which were asked in Mechanical Engineering Gate 2024 from the Heat Transfer, Fluid Mechanics and Thermodynamics. Now I would like to invite Dheera sir for discussing the solution to the questions of his subject. Thank you very much guys and let's welcome Dheera sir for the remaining part of this session. So guys, now we will see the questions from machine design, then from strength of material, then from production one by one. First of all, this was the question from machine design. It was a MCQ of one mark and this was from the bearing chapter. Let us see what they are saying. They are saying for a ball bearing, the fatigue life in millions of revolution. So they have given the load life relationship. Okay. I feel everybody is aware about this relation when we are saying L is equals to C by P and it is to the power n okay i feel everybody is aware that generally when we are talking about n n is coming out to be 3 4 ball bearing n is coming out to be 3 4 ball bearing and it is 10 by 3 4 roller bearing this much everybody would be aware of of this formula 
let us see what they are asking where p is the constant applied load and c is the basic dynamic load rating so they are saying that p is the applied load here okay so when we are talking about which one of the following statement is true so dear here first statement is n is equals to 3 assuming that the inner race is fixed outer race is revolving and n is equals to 3 assuming that the outer race is fixed inner race is rotating i already told you n is equals to 1 by 3 1 by 3 these two are the wrong option for sure so either a is the right answer or b is the right answer so if you see about the races i would like to say generally whenever we are defining the equivalent radial load in the formula we generally write it as ce upon pe to the power n okay when we define like this pe is defined as xvfr plus yfa into service factor s here v is nothing but the race rotation factor okay race rotation factor and my dear race rotation factor is coming out to be 1 or 1.2 depending on which race is rotating as they have nothing mentioned about that you know that if we are talking about the bearings with respect to shaft then shaft will be rotating okay and if shaft is rotating inner race will be rotating and outer race is going to be fixed so as per that my dear we would be considering outer race is fixed inner race is revolving so that should be the right answer because we generally talk about the bearing with respect to shaft okay but if you would be using uh, that axle on axle when you will be using then inner race will be fixed and outer race will be rotating so if nothing is mentioned about the load generally when we go for equal uh, that equivalent radial load then we go for that formula so that is why we would be considering b to be the perfect answer for this question moving further guys the next question this question is from the fatigue loading chapter fatigue loading you must have studied there is a fatigue diagram okay and from that this question is directly asked this type of question also have been appeared in uh, previous years like which of the following theory is the most conservative theory okay but this time what they have done the same thing which one of the following failure theory is the most conservative okay and the options are yield line soderberg line gerber line and modified goodman line so guys although in the classes we have already told you for this question what should be the answer still for your reference i am telling you that on x axis we show the mean stress on y axis we show the amplitude stress okay and then we are going to make different different lines okay so first let us say if we are considering considering here syt here sut similarly here we are considering se then syt okay so when we are talking about this sc syt sut what are the various lines so dear first of all as the name suggests yield line yield line is passing syt and syt this is the yield line okay this is going to be the yield line and then if you are talking about the soderberg line soderberg line is a line which is taking sc here and syt here this is the soderberg line so green one is soderberg soderberg this is yield line so out of these two obviously Soderberg is having the lesser area then we are talking about the Gerber line so for Gerber SYT when we are talking about here SYT here it is SC SC and SUT you will be joining that is said to be Goodman line that is said to be Goodman line and if you are making a parabola here that is said to be Gerber so dear if you see the area wise Gerber is having the highest area in its curve if you are considering this curve is considering the highest area and out of these for the minimum area is taken by Soderberg but still they have not used uh, Goodman they have used modified Goodman for that you need to know what is modified Goodman so when we are talking about the modified Goodman for modified Goodman I would like to tell you that modified Goodman is considering this part of Goodman and this part of yield line so even that red one is going to be above the Soderberg so if you see Soderberg is taking the minimum area so that is why it is said to be the most conservative uh, for the, uh, theory you can say because conservative means which will be having lesser area okay so that is said to be conservative why that is the reason that we have discussed in the detail in theories of failures as well 
and also we have discussed in fatigue loading as well so a theory which is having lesser area means it is giving you less loading conditions because if you are going to load above this according to this theory your material or component will fail so answer should be soderberg again so this was the second time asked in gate at that time also answer was soderberg only for that uh, options were different at that time okay moving further here to make you confuse they have mentioned modified okay moving further guys next question is from the brake topic if you see a band brake shown in the figure has a coefficient of friction of 0.3 the band can take a maximum force of 1.5 kN so this is the maximum tension band can take then you can see the maximum braking force that can be safely applied they are asking the maximum value of f okay so you know that they have given the direction of rotation like this <coughs> so if direction of rotation is given we make the fbd of drum you know if drum is rotating in this direction then to stop and to apply the braking torque this should be the direction of the maximum tension t1 this should be the minimum tension t2 and i feel everybody is aware that t1 minus t2 into r is the braking torque and t1 by t2 is e to the power mu theta here theta should be radian and i feel it is very much clear that theta should be pi okay so theta is nothing but pi and guys now we need to also go for the equilibrium equation which is nothing but about the hinge we need to take the moment to be zero so if you take that you know if tension t1 is acting here this is t2 then if i make the fbd of lever for lever this will be t1 this will be t2 okay so if i take summation moment about o to be zero then guys i would be writing here f into total is 1000 mm is equals to t2 because f is creating in the clockwise direction t2 is anti clockwise so t2 into 200 so guys this will give us the value of f as t2 into 200 upon 1000 but how we will get t2 from here because we are already given the maximum value that is t1 this is t1 so by using t1 as 1.5 kN we can calculate t2 after getting the value of t2 you can get the value of f okay so guys i have already solved it for you so i am giving you the value of f when you will be solving it the value of f will be coming out to be uh, around 116.89 it is 116.89 newton or in other words you can take it as 117 newton i feel everybody is clear so i have already made the calculations for you and t2 will be coming out to be what when you will go for t2 t2 from this equation will be coming out to be 584.584.49 newton okay guys because t1 was given to us so this is how we can do this type of question and guys now we are moving to the next question so we have seen the machine design question now we are entering into the strength of material part after strength of material we will see production part okay let us see so here my dear this is a figure given to us and they have given this this and this they have mentioned that these are three hinges and the distance between p and q is 6 meter and this distance is also 6 meter okay so i feel everybody is aware if we are taking this first of all assume a vertical reaction ra here and also assume a horizontal reaction ha here and here also you would be having a horizontal reaction a vertical reaction rc and a horizontal reaction hc okay so after assuming these reactions you know now what i can write first of all this p is downward q is downward so i can write r at a plus r at b is equals to p plus q that is simple equilibrium they have given p as 100 q as 50 so it is 150 kN this is one equation you know that because they are saying that the magnitude of horizontal reaction at b you need to find out 
सो द क्वेश्चन स्टेट्स कि ए थ्री हिज आर्च ए बी सी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सेमी सर्कल इज शोर इन द फिगर एंड द आर्च इज इन स्टेटिक इक्विब्रियम अंडर वर्टिकल लोड्स पी एंड क्यू नेग्लेक्ट फ्रिक्शन एट ऑल द हिंजेस द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ ओरिजेंटल रिएक्शन एट बी सो यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट ओके दिस पॉइंट इज ओके दिस पॉइंट इज ए दिस इज सी सो वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट द ओरिजेंटल रिएक्शन एट दिस पॉइंट ओके दैट इज द क्वेश्चन नीड टू बी आंसर सो गाइज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई हैव रिटर्न आर ए प्लस आर बी इज दिस इक्वेशन वन नाउ लेट एस कंसिडर द समेशन मोमेंट अबाउट बी टू बी जीरो If you will take, you know that about B rather than B, we are taking about C. About this point, I am taking the moment to be zero. You can see this H A will be passing from here. So moment because of H A, because of H C, because of R C, because of all three, the moment will be zero. One moment will be created by this R A. So I will write R A into twelve. R A into twelve. Then this P is creating anti-clockwise, so minus P. You know this is three and six, nine minus hundred into nine. Then you know that this Q is also this is creating anti-clockwise. This is creating anti-clockwise. So minus fifty into three. Distances are very much visible. This is six. This is three. Rest will be three. So when you will be going for that, putting it to be zero. You will be getting the value of R A here. You will be getting the value of R A here. Okay. So once you are getting the value of R A, once you are going to get the value of R A, R A will be coming out to be after this calculation as. Let me check. Is it coming? Yes, it is coming out to be eighty-seven point five. Eighty-seven point five. Yes, it is coming out to be eighty-seven point five. so we have calculated this ra but why we have calculated ra when we were asked the horizontal reaction so guys now we would be considering this half part because you know one more hinge is given here so if i consider this much part just feel it like this then you know here we have taken a reaction hr sorry ra and one reaction is ha okay and you know here some load p is there that is 100 and here i am assuming a horizontal reaction that is hb and a vertical reaction is rb okay r is already known to us so dear now if you can see if we are going for the summation fx you know summation fx will be zero equilibrium of this part that will give us that ha is equals to hb okay so here dear as you know b point is also hinge so i am taking the summation moment about b to be zero so if i take summation moment about b to be zero you know that this distance is 3 this distance is also 3 so if i am going to make the moment about because of ra ra is creating clockwise so i will write ra into 6 okay this 100 is anti clockwise Minus hundred into three. This H A is anti-clockwise, and H A is also at a distance of six meter. So H A is anti-clockwise minus H A into six. When you will be equated to zero, you know that R A value is already eighty-seven point five. So you will put eighty-seven point five here. You will get the value of H A, and you would be getting the value of H A. I am giving you the value. H A value is coming out to be after solving is thirty seven point five, thirty seven point five. So when we are getting it thirty seven point five newtons, then dear you also know we are supposed to find out at B not at A, but you can see that by this relation H A and H B are equal because this is to the right hand side, this is to the left side. So I would be saying as per H A is equals to H B. So answer should be thirty-seven point five newtons. So this question is also done, guys. This is the question uh, first time in the mechanical from Archie's question came. Generally, it do not came because Archie is the topic of civil engineering. But as this was a simple support reaction type of question, so they have asked like that. Moving further, guys. Next question is from pressure vessels. Okay, 
वट इज द क्वेश्चन द फिगर शोज ए थिन सिलेंड्रिकल प्रेशर वेसल कंस्ट्रक्टेड बाय वेल्डिंग प्लेट्स टूगेदर एलोंग ए लाइन दैट मेक्स एन एंगल ऑफ सिक्सटी डिग्री ओके दिस एंगल इज गिवन टू अस सिक्सटी डिग्री सो गाइस विद द ओरिजोनटल द क्लोज वेसल हैज अ वोल थिकनेस ऑफ टेन एम एम एंड डायमीटर ऑफ टू मीटर वेन सब्जेक्टेड टू इंटरनल प्रेशर ऑफ टू हंड्रेड के पी ए द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस एक्टिंग ऑन द वेल्ड इज सो डियर वी वुड बी कंसिडरिंग लेटर से हेयर ए पॉइंट एंड यू नो वेन एवर वी आर शोइंग द स्टेट ऑफ स्ट्रेस ऑन दैट पॉइंट यू नो दैट दिस डायरेक्शन इज ऑफ लेंथ सो ऑब्वियसली हेयर वी विल बी हैविंग द लॉन्गिट्यूडल स्ट्रेसेस फॉर सरकमफेरेंस वी आर हैविंग सरकमफेरेंशियल स्ट्रेसेस and they have taken a plane that is making 60 degree with horizontal so you can see the plane the plane is making let us say 60 degree with the horizontal so obviously it will be making 30 degree with the x face okay so first of all we will find out the value of sigma c and sigma l sigma c is pd upon 2t sigma l is pd upon 40 so i feel as per the values given we can very easily calculate sigma c and sigma l and i have done it because pressure is 200 kilo pascal 200 kilo pascals into diameter mentioned is 2 meters 2 meters this is 200 kpa two times thickness is coming out to be what 10 mm thickness is 10 mm So when you will be solving it, it will be coming out to be twenty MPa. Similarly, as PD by forty will be ten MPa. Okay, and if you see here, longitudinal is acting as sigma xx, Cir circumferential is acting as sigma yy, and you need to find out the stress on this plane. Here we can assume normal stress to be sigma theta, and what they have asked from us is. the magnitude of normal stress okay so you know for this we derived the formula in the principal stress chapter which is sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 plus sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta you know there is no tau xy this will be zero from here guys we will be getting the value of sigma theta and the value of sigma theta after solving you will be getting it as 12.5 mpa so you can see guys we are doing entire thing calculations although you have to do even if i will do you have to check okay whether it is correct or not so answer will be 12.5 they have mentioned up to one decimal place so 12.5 mpa will be the answer for this okay and theta you know what to take you know here theta is from x phase in the formula so you would be considering theta to be 30 degree because in our derivation when we have got this relation we assume theta to be anti clockwise from x phase you can see it is anti clockwise from x phase this is x phase which is perpendicular to x axis okay guys moving further next question guys uh, this is a good question you can see in this question they are asking about what so here they have applied two types of loadings axial load and torsional twisting moment a solid massless cylindrical member of 50 mm diameter is rigidly attached to at one end so diameter is given as 50 mm then they are saying a load p of 100 kN is applied and a torque of 600 Nm is applied assume that the axis of the cylinder is normal to the support considering distortion energy this is a question from theory of failure even i would like to say it is written som because we study theory of failure in both som and md but as per the syllabus theory of failure is considered in machine design i would like to tell you that okay so with allowable yield stress is 300 mpa the factor of safety in the design is so dear when we are talking about this the factor of safety in the design is so what to do here first of all we will be finding out the axial stress because of axial loading 
विच इज फोर्स बटे एरिया यू वुड बी राइटिंग हेयर पी टू बी हंड्रेड न्यूटन एरिया टू बी पाई बाय फोर डी स्क्वेयर आफ्टर सोल्विंग यू विल बी गेटिंग द एक्सीएल स्ट्रेस फिफ्टी पॉइंट नाइन थ्री एम पी ए ओके देन यू नो बिकॉज ऑफ टोर्शन शियर स्ट्रेस विल बी कमिंग द फॉर्मूला फॉर दैट इज सिक्सटीन टी बाई पाई डी क्यूब पुटिंग द वैल्यूज यू विल गेट टाउ एस एस ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट फोर फोर सिक्स स्टिल टास्क इज नॉट ओवर ओवर दिस इज जस्ट वी फाउंड आउट टू स्ट्रेसेस यू नो एक्सीएल स्ट्रेस एट ए पॉइंट विल बी लाइक दिस सिग्मा ए एंड दिस इज टाउ एस If you see, this is the case of combined loading, because whenever normal and shear are coming together, we call such a loading as combined loading. For combined loading, we need to go for what? We need to go for theory of failures. They have already mentioned which theory to use? MDT. First of all, you need to find out sigma one comma two. It will be sigma x x plus sigma y y by two. Plus minus, then sigma x x minus sigma y y by two ka square plus tau x y ka square. This will give you the value of sigma one and two, and you know that sigma one ka square plus sigma two ka square minus sigma one sigma two less than equals to s y t square upon n square. This will give you the value of factor of safety. Okay, so this will give you the value for factor of safety, and when you will be putting all these values, you will be getting the factor of safety value to be equals to four point five. Is it clear for everybody? This is how we can do this question. Let us move to the next question. Next question is once again from strength of materials. Here you can see a horizontal beam of length twelve hundred mm is pinned at left end is resting on the roller other is hinge as shown in the figure they are saying that linearly varying load and you need to find out the magnitude of maximum bending moment acting on the beam so although this case we have done as a standard case if you remember we have done in the classes many times that if we are having this type of case this type of loading then what we do we are going to assume the support reactions we assume like this is a this is b we are assuming this as r a this is r b there is no horizontal load so horizontal reaction h a will be zero and you know when we calculate it we are assuming the entire load to be at its centroid okay so you know when you will be assuming this W L by two, the area of triangle, because this is W, this is L. So you would be having the value of R B and the value of R A. R A will be coming out to be W L by six. R B will be coming out to be W L by three. So what is W? W is hundred here, hundred, hundred newton per meter. Into length is twelve hundred mm. This is per meter. This is mm, so it should be twelve hundred into ten to the power minus three. Now divided by three. Now the answer will be coming into the newton. Similarly, you can put here W is hundred into one point two divided by six. So after solving, you will be getting the support reaction as per my calculations. Uh, they will be coming out to be what? They will be coming out to be Twenty and forty, so you can see that it will be coming out to be twenty newton. It will be coming out to be forty newton. Yes, it is very simply looking like that. Okay, and guys, now you know that how we can find out bending moment. Although I have given you the formula also after derivation that you can write that was W L cube upon nine root three. With that also we can do. But here I am not doing like that because I am not expecting that everybody would be remembering this formula. so for general procedure if we like any type of loading is given 
फॉर दैट पर्पज वी नो बेंडिंग मोमेंट इज मैक्सिम वेयर शेयर फोर्स इज चेंजिंग इट्स साइन और बिकमिंग इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी विल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल राइट डाउन द इक्वेशन फॉर शेयर फोर्स एट अ सेक्शन एक्स एक्स सो वेन यू विल राइट यू नो द साइन कन्वेंशन टू द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड अपवर्ड राइट हैंड साइड डाउन वर्ड इज पॉजिटिव लेफ्ट हैंड साइड डाउन वर्ड अपवर्ड राइट हैंड साइड अपवर्ड विल बी नेगेटिव सो फ्रॉम दैट टू द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड अपवर्ड इज पॉजिटिव वी विल राइट प्लस आर ए वट इज दिस इक्वेशन फॉर शेयर फोर्स ओके प्लस आर ए माइनस हाफ इंटू डब्ल्यू एक्स एक्स इंटू एक्स एंड एवरीबडी नो डब्ल्यू एक्स एक्स इज डब्ल्यू एक्स बाई एल सो ट्वेंटी माइनस हाफ डब्ल्यू एक्स स्क्वेयर अपॉन एल एंड वेन यू विल बी पुटिंग इट टू बी जीरो यू वुड बी गेटिंग द पोजिशन वेयर शेयर फोर्स इज बिकमिंग इक्वल टू जीरो एंड लेट मी सी आई हैव डन दिस कैलकुलेशन इट विल बी कमिंग आउट टू बी पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन थ्री मीटर्स when we get this what i need to do i need to write down the bending moment equation you know the sign convention for bending moment is this sagging positive hogging negative so we can say that this is creating sagging and this centroid of triangle will be creating hogging so sagging sagging will be ra into x minus wx square upon l is the area of the triangle you know the area of the triangle will be acting at its centroid and that will be acting at a distance of x by 3 so i would be writing here into x by 3 okay and you know this is the bending moment general equation we need to find it at x is equals to 0.693 when you will be finding out you will be getting the maximum bending moment which is coming out to be equals to 9.237 Newton meter. Okay, so we will be writing a nine point two Newton meter. Clear for everybody. This is how we can solve this question. I hope everybody is getting it. Moving further, guys, to the next question. This is one more question from strength of materials. Which of the following beams are statically indeterminate? So, dear, if you see these cases. there is a confusion uh, between the many students because some peoples were thinking ki this is internal hinge but they have not mentioned anything like that and here also they have taken the same dot so if we don't have any internal hinge in that case if you will see you know here we will be having one reaction upward other reaction upward okay there is no horizontal loading so we have two unknowns two useful equation out of three so this is a statically determinate similarly if you see case this one here also if you will see two unknowns will be coming here one unknown will be coming here three unknowns three equations we can very easily do so this is also statically determinate this is msq so if you see here if this is not internal hinge you know one force this moment this is making this statically indeterminate and these are two forces and two reaction here one here and one here so this is also statically indeterminate so as per that if we say b and c should be the answer because they have not mentioned that this is internal hinge because this is because if internal hinges are there they are also uh, helping us to find out the support reaction like in compound beams we see okay so that is why as per the question mentioned b and c should be the right answer For statically indeterminate. Moving further, guys. Uh, now we are entering into the production technology questions. Production technology is always having the highest weightage. We will see now production questions, and after going for production question, then we will see about theory of machines, industrial as well. So, guys, this is from metal forming. This is a very good paper because they have not asked any difficult numerical from the real analysis of metal forming. the earring phenomena in the metal forming is associated with that is rolling forging deep drawing and extrusion so if you remember guys earring is the defect of deep drawing if you remember when we were studying deep drawing due to an isotropy like you are making a glass like that but when you are making the glass this part like which we are showing like circular 
it was not remaining circular but taking some this type of shape like that okay so like i will be showing on this only like which you are expecting to be like this here some part would was outside some part inside like that 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 was the earring okay that is the earring phenomena and this earring is happening because whenever material is showing an isotropy material is not perfectly isotropic so as in some direction it is having more deformation in some direction it is having less deformation so that is why it is happening in the deep drawing because of an isotropy okay moving further guys next question is from the grinding wheel specifications so grinding wheel specification is the grinding wheel used to provide the best surface finish they have mentioned this i am taking an example let us say i am writing this a 80 l5v this a is telling us about the types of abrasive types of abrasive means everybody is aware that al2o3 okay and then we can see this number 80 this 80 is also known as sheave number or it is you can say in particular uh, you can say particular area what are the number of abrasive particles l is the grade of the grinding wheel that is telling us how the wheel and abrasives are connected the bonding is soft hard medium so l refers to medium 5 is telling us about the structure whether it is dense structure okay or you can say open structure v is telling about the type of bonding that is vitrified v means vitrified so here we need to see about the surface finish surface finish is better if cutting edges are smaller if cutting edges will be smaller they will be more in number in a particular surface area so dear based on that we need to see this number which is 54 here 60 here 36 here 80 here so highest number is 80 answer will be b for this okay yes moving further guys the next question this is from casting so guys the allowance provided to a pattern for easy withdrawal from the sand mold so dear you know when we talk about the types of allowance number one is shrinkage allowance okay that is provided because of thermal reasons second is draft allowance draft allowance is given for the easy removal but you can see draft allowance is not in the option third is third is machining allowance which is finishing allowance that is not helping in withdrawal next is distortion distortion is given to some particular shapes fifth is wrapping allowance or shake allowance so shake allowance is what like let us say this is my pattern okay and this pattern is there in the cavity like this sorry not cavity in the mold like this all around we have the molding set now dear when you want to take the pattern out you would be hammering the pattern when you will be hammering the pattern the sand which is touching the pattern will go sideways and when it will be going sideways it will be making space for easy removal of pattern so that is why shake allowance is going to help to remove the pattern so answer will be shake allowance if shake is not there then draft allowance also helps us because in draft allowance we are going to make the pattern like this for easy removal okay so this is how the questions are coming moving to the next question this is from advanced machining ncc nc chapter question is the preparatory function in cnc machine programming are denoted by the alphabet i would like to say there we study two codes one is g other is m g codes are said to be preparatory functions preparatory functions m codes are said to be miscellaneous so dear here you need to understand first of all what is preparatory what is miscellaneous preparatory functions are those which are giving the commands to the cutting tool like how to move where to move 
miscellaneous are telling us about coolant to be on or off coolant to be means extra operations which are not contributing in the cutting operation so answer for this they are asking about the preparatory function answer will be g course moving further this is from material science this time the phase is present in pure light i feel everybody would be aware that when we are talking about the pure light this is the product of annealing and normalizing okay and when we make the iron carbon diagram you know it is coming like this hai na whenever we are making here it is alpha here it is gamma here it is alpha plus gamma and below it is alpha plus fe3c alpha is ferrite fe3c is what is that cementite so guys the answer will be ferrite plus cementite ferrite plus cementite ferrite plus cementite d is correct ferrite plus cement what is ferrite ferrite is carbon in alpha iron alpha iron is pure form of iron bcc structure magnetic below curie point temperature so answer will be ferrite plus cementite okay moving further guys next question this is from welding from welding two questions were there this time the most suitable electrode material used for joining the low alloy steels gas metal arc welding so dear you need to understand when we are talking about the gas metal arc welding in gas metal arc welding the electrode material and work piece material they are same so that is why if you are going for welding of low alloy steel answer will be low alloy steel many people have done it tungsten that is for tig okay for mig low alloy steel will be the answer moving further guys this is from taylor to life if you see before exam i have taken some important topics video you will find out of 50 topics which i have taken important you will find more than 30 topics are there from which questions were asked literally so even if you go for those topics you could have a good chances to score if you see the cutting tool provided tool life of 60 minutes while machining because i have not given like ki uh, i have seen some kind of uh, like dream and we get no it is not like that it is based on experience like every year what they are asking so guys if you see this a cutting tool provides a tool life of 60 minutes while machining with a cutting speed of 60 meter per minute so v1 is 60 meter per minute t1 is 60 minutes then they are saying when the same tool is used for machining the same material provides a tool life of 10 minutes for a cutting speed of 100 meter per minute so dear obviously from this data we can use v1 t1 to the power n v2 t2 to the power n from here we can write t1 by t2 to the power n v2 by v1 take log both side n ln t1 by t2 ln v2 by v1 this will give you the value of n i have already solved it for you and the value of n is coming out to be what let me see and tell you because i have done the calculations to save your time uh, the n value will be coming out to be 0.285 0.285 so when we have this value now they are saying that what would be what would be uh, the tool life for 80 meter per minute so i will say v1 t1 to the power n v3 t3 to the power n so you know v3 is given t3 is asked so i will be going for t3 it will be coming out to be what you know after solving because v1 is 60 v3 is 80 t1 is 60 you will get t3 so t3 will be coming out to be 21.87 minutes okay guys so this was the metal getting question moving further next question 
This is once again from the machining. This time, this is from the milling operation. A flat surface of carbon 60 steel having dimensions of 100 mm length, 200 mm width is produced by HSS, slab mill cutter. So, dear, this is my workpiece. This is the cutter. This is D D. You know the compulsory approach. They are saying that the feed per tooth is 0.1 mm, cutting velocity is 20 meter per minute, depth of cut is 2 mm. The machining time required to remove the entire stroke is. You know that first of all, we will be finding out the compulsory approach. The formula for that is D into D minus D. So let us say what we are getting as the value for the compulsory approach when we will calculate. Uh, we would be getting it as 14 mm. How? You know that depth of cut is given as 2 mm. What is diameter? Diameter... Okay, they have given that a flat surface of carbon 60 steel having dimensions of 100 mm length, 200 mm width is produced by HSF slab milling cutter and cutter has 100 mm diameter. So 100 minus 2. This will be coming out to be 14 mm. Okay, yes, 14 mm. Yes, fine. So guys, now you know that this cutter, why we are using this compulsory approach? Because we want that if cutter will be traveling L distance, you will not be getting the entire material to be cut. This much part will, will be remaining uncut. But if we are having this extra, then our tool will be reaching to this position after going through this much extra. Because this X plus this L, that much tool has to travel. Okay. So you would be having the machining time now. Machining time will be equals to L plus X upon F. Here F is feed in mm per minute. You all know feed in mm per minute is feed per tooth number of tooth into N. Feed per tooth is given as this is 0.1. Number of tooth is 8. RPM is not given to us. Then you know velocity is pi d n. From here we can find out n as v upon pi d. So you will be putting here v upon pi d. v is given to us. What is v? v is 20 meter per minute. Okay. So when you will be putting the value, you will be getting the value of feed. And as I have calculated, you will get feed as 50.93 mm per minute. Then machining time will be L plus X upon F and machining time will be coming out to be 2.238 minutes or in other words 2.24 minutes. So guys this is how we can do this and I hope everybody is clear about this question. Wonderful. Moving further. So guys now we are moving to the sheet metal operations. Next question from blanking. A blanking operation is performed. On C20 steel sheet to obtain a circular disc. Okay, I would like to tell you this question is given MTA. Marks to all. Okay. So that is why even if we want, we can leave this question. But still I am telling you. Okay, first of all, what was the mistake there? A blanking operation is performed on C20 steel sheet obtained of a circular disc having a diameter of 20 mm. And a thickness of 2 mm. And allowance of 0 0.04 is provided the punch size used for the operation is actually for allowance they have not mentioned okay whether it is going to be radial or diameter so if you are considering this allowance to be like 4% of thickness then you know that blank size which is they have asked the blank size the punch size so you know blank size is punch size plus two times of radial clearance we know this. So if we are talking about the punch size, it will be blank size. Blank size is 20 mm minus 2 times. Now the clearance is if you take it, 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर इन टू थिकनेस इज टू एम एम सो यू विल बी गेटिंग ट्वेंटी माइनस फोर फोर जो सिक्सटीन सो टू इंटू पॉइंट फोर दिस इज जीरो पॉइंट वन सिक्स इट विल बी कमिंग आउट टू बी नाइनटीन पॉइंट एट फोर सो डियर द प्रॉब्लम इन दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज इट वॉज नॉट मैंशन वेदर इट इज रेडियल और नॉट and also in some of the books uh, regarding the allowance some different formulas are given so as it was not mentioned about the clearance uh, about it is radial or diameter so you can leave this solution also but i would like to say they have given mta for this marks to all so obviously it means they were also accepting that the statement of the question was not perfectly correct so you can leave this question moving to the next question this question is A numerical from the casting. Aluminium is casted in a cube-shaped mold having dimension of 20 cross 20 cross 20. Another mold of the same mold material is used to cast a sphere of aluminium of diameter 20. The pouring temperature for both is same. The ratio of the solidification time. Ts of cube to the Ts of sphere. You know that solidification time is directly proportional to volume by surface area ka square. So you can write it to be volume of cube, surface area of sphere, surface area of cube, volume of sphere ka square. So you know volume of cube is a cube, surface area of sphere is four pi r square, surface area of cube is six a square. And volume of sphere is four by three pi r cube. Ka square. When you will be solving this, the ratio of solidification time of cube to the ratio of solidification time of the sphere. What you will get? Let us see. A square will get it cancelled. Four pi will get it cancelled. R square will get it cancelled. So you can see it is coming out to be a. And this is three to the six. A by two R, A by D, and you can see A is twenty, D is twenty. So A by D is one. Answer will be one. They have mentioned answer in integer. For such question, there is no range given. One to one is the answer. Moving further. So guys, this is welding question, and. This question was also MTA marks to all. Initially, they have given wrong answer to this. Then they have done marks to all because there is a problem in the uh, like here twenty joule per second. This was the uh, wrongly you can say misprint in the question. Okay, but still as per the given, if you want me to solve in an arc welding process, the voltage and current are given. So you can see the rate of heat generation, which is nothing but power, is V into I. So this is nothing but six thousand joules per second. Then they are saying that area is given, welding speed is given, but they are saying the heat required to melt is twenty joule per second, and then they are saying the heat lost to the surrounding. You know when they are saying that heat required ka rate is twenty joule per second, then you need to find out first of all what is the heat loss. Heat loss is Six thousand minus twenty joules per second, and if you will find out the percentage of heat loss, then it is five nine eight zero divided by six thousand into hundred will be coming out to be ninety nine point six seven percent. You can see this is the misprint clearly because that much heat cannot be lost to the surrounding because generally you know efficiency such poor efficiency why we will take but you can say as question was given by examiner whatever he day we have he give we have to accept it so in that case this should be the answer but they have given initially the answer is 66.67 percent why because here it was not joule per second if you will take here joule per mm uh, joule per mm cube then you can see area and speed are also given so if you will be taking it joule per mm cube then you will be getting this answer so this question was challenged and they have given mta marks to all okay 
so that is why otherwise if you will say that if it is given joule per mm cube then how we will be doing the heat required would have been 20 joule per mm cube i will be multiplying it with area mm square velocity mm per second now you will be getting heat required so 20 into area is 20 into 5 you can see 2 to ja 4 5 ja 20 you will get 2000 joule per second now if you will see the efficiency 2000 is the heat utilized 6000 into 100 also will be coming out to be 66.67 percent so that's why this question was given marks to all okay guys so this was about the uh, production okay now we will see the questions from theory of machines and vibrations and then for engineering mechanics then for industrial one by one we are going to see let us see so let us see now the questions from theory of machines and vibrations so guys this question is a linear this is the mcq for one mark a linear spring mass dashboard system with a mass of 2 kg so i am writing the data given mass of 2 kg and is set in motion with viscous damping that is it's from damped vibration if the natural frequency is 15 hertz fn is 15 hertz so omega n will be 2 pi fn it is 30 pi okay then they are saying amplitude of two successive cycles measured r so you know that it is x of n is equals to 7.75 and x of n plus 1 is 7.20 and they are saying the coefficient of viscous damping that is c you need to find out so dear first of all you need to apply the formula for logarithmic decremental ratio so you know x of n upon x of n plus 1 that is said to be logarithmic decremental ratio and you know that is equals to delta that is equals to delta and you know that xn by xn plus 1 this can be written as e ki power delta okay so dear that ratio is known to us and this delta is defined as 2 pi zeta upon square root of 1 minus zeta ka square so if you will be equating this with zeta that is equals to ln of we have the value 7.75 upon 7.2 this will give us the value of zeta and i have already calculated for you zeta will be coming out to be 0 0.0117 0 0.0117 okay this is the value of zeta we got yes 0 0.0117 yes now you know that when we write 2 zeta omega n that is defined as c by m so 2 into 0 0.0117 omega n is 30 pi is equals to c by mass is 2 kg this will give you the value of damping coefficient c and that value will be coming out to be 4.41 newton meter per second so guys the answer is going to be a for this this is a question from damped vibration system. I hope everybody would be able to do this. Moving to the next question, guys. This is from flywheel. Flywheel, this is the one mark MCQ again. The change in kinetic energy of an engine is 300 joules. So you can see delta E is directly given to us as 300 joules. Then they are saying minimum and maximum shaft speeds are omega minimum is 200 radians per second and omega maximum 280 radians per second and you can see they are saying assume that the torque time function is purely harmonic to achieve a coefficient of fluctuation cs 0.05 and the moment of inertia you know that the equation fundamental equation energy equation i omega mean square cs so delta E is 300 joules, 
i we need to calculate omega mean is maximum plus minimum by 2 that is 280 plus 200 by 2 this is not 200 this is 220 220 cos square cs is 0 0.05 this will give you the value of i and what i calculated for you is i will be coming out to be 0 0.096 kg meter square the answer for this is b 0 0.096 kg meter square this is the one mark question from flywheel topic easy question okay moving further guys next question this was slightly difficult geometry based question at an instant op is this this thing is given to you okay so this diagram is given to you and they have said all the details about that so dear you know that here we can consider this fixed link to be a one link okay this fixed is one link this we can consider as link number two i am showing it with the red color this is nothing but the link number two and this is nothing but the link number three okay so dear if you see this is a turning pair so we can consider this point a as i13 and we can consider this point as this is once again a turning pair this can be considered as i12 okay and here this point p here it is said that ki here this is a slot actually and in this slot this point can move like this so dear the motion of link 2 with respect to 3 is going to be in this direction so you know when we are having the velocity we are going to sit perpendicular so you know that this is the velocity direction if you will be sitting perpendicular to this direction obviously i23 will be lying somewhere on this line okay and if we are talking about if we are talking this is actually a sliding pair why i am saying this this is a sliding pair and for sliding pair you must have seen that if we have a sliding pair like this this is a block if this block is moving like this you know that i center will be somewhere on this line we are saying it at infinity because this is motion which is going to be like parallel to earth like that okay so we need to sit perpendicular to that but here when we are for, uh, searching for i23 this is one motion we are aware of and we also know this is the line joining this is the line joining i center i13 and i12 and you know i23 will also lie on this line you also know i23 will be lying on this line so here i23 will be this why this because here at infinity because one surface is this second is this that's why here it is i12 at infinity okay but here if you are talking about this three this this abc link is said to be rotating this two link is also said to be rotating so none of these are the fixed link at which some motion is happening so these two are rotating links that's why their i center will not be at infinity so you would be sitting perpendicular to the motion and here you will be getting i23 is it clear this is how we are going to get i23 and here now we need to take care of the angles you can see here this side is 150 mm this side is also 150 mm so by that logic this angle should be 45 degree okay and this angle should also be 45 degree and if these are 45 degree we can also say this angle to also be 45 degree okay and if this angle is 60 degree this angle should be 30 degree so if this is 30 this is already we know 45 if this is 45 this is 30 this angle cannot be 90 this angle will be what 45 plus 30 75 so this should be 105 degree and this should be 75 degree okay so guys this is how the geometry of this figure is i can understand this was a very difficult question uh, for the first time if you will see because thinking in that way may take time even for faculties when we have seen we took a lot of time to solve this question so dear this is going to be the i centers we have made now actually what was asked from us we need to find out uh, the magnitude of angular velocity of link abc so we are supposed to find out omega 3 you know theorem of angular velocity you know theorem of angular velocity because omega 2 is known to us so we can write omega 2 i 2 3 i 1 2 
इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा थ्री आई टू थ्री आई वन थ्री सो वी जस्ट नीड टू मेजर दीज टू डिस्टेंसेज बिकॉज वी ऑलरेडी आर गिवन ओमेगा टू दिस इज गिवन टू अस ओके सो इफ वी आर गोइंग टू फाइंड आउट दिस आई टू थ्री आई वन टू सो दिस इज आई टू थ्री दिस इज आई वन टू यू नीड टू सी दिस फॉर दैट आई नीड टू यूज द साइन रूल आई नीड टू यूज द साइन रूल ओके सो यू नो दैट दिस ऑल द डिस्टेंसिज आर गिवन और नॉट दे हैव मैंशन दिस ओ पी टू बी वन फिफ्टी एम एम सो दिस ओ पी इज नोन टू अस सो वी कैन राइट फ्रॉम द ट्रेंगल ओ P and I two three. From here, I need the distance of I two three, I one three. Sorry, I two three, I one two. I need this distance. So this, the angle in front, the angle in front will be what? If this is thirty, obviously this will be sixty. Okay, sixty uh, or something else. Yes, it is going to be sixty. Yes, this is forty-five. This is seventy-five. Seventy-five and forty is one hundred fifteen and one hundred twenty. Yes, sixty it should be. So when we are saying it to be sixty, so guys, you will be taking this triangle, and I can write that I one two I two three divided by sine sixty, and that is equals to. we already know this this is op it is 150 divided by sin the angle in front of this is 75 this will give me the distance i12 i23 so from here we can write i12 i23 distance and i12 i23 what i would be getting i have solved it for you I one two I two three. Let me check. I one two I two three is one thirty four point four nine. Okay, this is one distance. Similarly, we can take for this this triangle. Once again, this is known to us, so we can write one fifty by sine angle in front of this is one zero five, and that is equals to I two three I one three. Divided by sine thirty. This will give me I two three I one three. That distance I two three I one three is going to be it is I two three I one three. I feel it will be coming out to be seventy seven point six five. You can solve it. I have done it for you. So just put the values here, and you would be getting omega three. That is for ABC link is twelve point one two radians per second. So answer will be twelve point one two radians per second. I feel you understood. I understand this is a difficult question. Okay, moving further, but I feel you understood how to uh, deal with this question. So guys, this is one more good question from Tobit vibration. Uh, this is the vibratory system given. And this is said in the question. There is a spring of two k stiffness. This is a spring of k stiffness. This is mass m, and there is a inextensible string is there. This spring is also present, and they are saying here some axial deformation is going to happen. They are asking you the critical uh, driving frequency means natural frequency. They are asking you. So guys, when we are talking about this question, let us take this mass m, and let us say this mass m is getting deformed or sorry, getting displaced by a x displacement. If this is getting displaced by x displacement, this spring will be providing a uh, force that is said to be restoring force, and that restoring force onto this mass is going to be 2k into x. That is the effect of spring. Okay, so guys, second thing you need to understand that if you see this entire is one string, if here the tension I am assuming t here, I am assuming tension t here also the tension will be t. Then obviously by e for equilibrium here the tension should be T dash that is equals to 2T. So obviously on this mass a tension of 2T will also be acting, and other than that DL numbered component if you go for MX double dot, 
you know that dl number side add by component and we will be equating it to zero the summation but we need to understand what is t here actually the equation is becoming mx double dot plus 2tx plus 2kx is equal to zero here you need to understand what is t so dear if this is going to go down by x you can see this pulley this pulley condition is this so this mass will be coming down by x only with a condition if this pulley is coming down by x and for this pulley to come down x you know that pulley is having string on this side also string on this side also so if it is going to come down by x this side also this side also string has to go down x and x so for that here the movement will be happening is equal to 2x because of that tension will be k into 2x so we can say t is nothing but k into 2x so if t is k into 2x you would be writing mx double dot plus 2k into 2x into x plus sorry plus 2kx 2kx this x will not be there 2t only that is equals to 0 so you can see 4kx plus 2kx is 6kx so we can write the equation so the equation will become guys mx double dot plus 6kx is equals to 0 and when you will be equating it with x double dot plus you know what it what it is it is going to be omega square x is equals to 0 so from here omega square will be 6k by m and natural frequency would be coming out to square root of 6k by m okay now dear we already know k is 1.5 kilo newton so it is 1500 10 you know solving, uh, solving will give you 30 radians per second okay because this will give you 15 6 ja, 900 30 radians per second the answer will be 30 so guys this was a good question by looking at the figure obviously any student would be getting fear key how much and how to solve it but this is how we can solve this question okay so guys the next question is from the gear train you can see this gear train is given to us with the line diagram with the line diagram you can understand that this is sun gear this is planet and this is ring gear and this is the arm it is mentioned already so this notation is very clear that it is going to be a sun planet system and i already told you this is the notation of half internal gear, half internal gear or you can say the ring gear this is the notation of the full gear okay external gear that i already told you so based on that you can have an idea and when you are having this like this this is for the half external gear okay so arm is specifically mentioned here between sun and planet we are having this you can see in the data the number of teeth on the sun are mentioned they are saying sun have 19 and planet have 23 24 so dear you know that we need to find out the number of teeth on the internal gear that is the annular gear by the radius relation so what is the radius relation you know that this is the radius of sun this is the diameter of planet so radius of sun plus two times radius of planet is radius of ring gear ring or annular you know that so dear radius of sun can be written as module times number of teeth of sun by two 2 times module times number of teeth in pinion by 2 is equals to m times number of teeth in ring by 2. You already know 2, 2, 2 will get cancelled out. Modules are equal for all the mating gears. Sun gear is having 19 teeth. 2 into 24 is TR. So TR will be coming out to be what? 48 plus, 48 plus 10 is going to be 58 and 9 is going to be 
नंबर ऑफ टीथ्स आर कमिंग आउट टू बी सिक्सटी सेवन नाउ इट इज यूअर चॉइस वेदर यू वॉन्ट टू गो विद द टेब्यूलर मैथड और यू वॉन्ट टू गो विद द अलजेब्राइक मैथड यू नो फॉर अलजेब्राइक मैथड एज वी हैव आर्म बिटवीन दीज टू लाइक दिस वी कैन ऑल्सो यूज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लाइक दिस इज टू दिस इज थ्री एंड दिस इज फोर एंड दिस इज आर्म ए यू नो हेयर इट विल बी फिक्स सो यू कैन अप्लाई बिटवीन टू एंड थ्री एस एन टू माइनस एन थ्री सॉरी एन टू माइनस एन आर्म बाय एन थ्री माइनस एन आर्म माइनस ऑफ टी थ्री बाई टी टू दिस इज वन इक्वेशन यू हैव देन यू कैन ऑल्सो राइट द नेक्स्ट इक्वेशन एज एन थ्री माइनस एन आर्म एन फोर माइनस एन आर्म यू नो दे आर इंटरनल गियर सो प्लस टी फोर बाई टी थ्री so when you will be multiplying these two equations you would be getting n2 minus na upon n3 sorry n3 minus na into n3 minus na upon n4 minus na right hand side will be t3 t4 t2 t3 minus sign will be there t3 t3 cancel out it is minus of t4 by t2 okay minus of t4 by t2 so dear now you know that this n3 minus a n3 minus a will get cancel out so we finally got n2 minus na divided by n4 minus na is equals to minus of 67 upon 19 they have given that e gear 2 is fixed so n2 is given to us as fixed and gear 4 rotates 20 rpm counter clockwise okay so 20 rpm counter clockwise n2 is 0 minus n a let us consider counter clockwise to be positive 20 minus n a is equals to minus of 67 by 19 You can see this minus minus will get cancel out. So 19 times of n a is equals to the 67 into 2. This is going to be 19 n a, and this will be coming here. Uh, so 60, 60, 120, and 134 minus 134, 0. Okay. And we have minus n a will become plus sixty seven n a. So we would be having nineteen minus sixty seven or sixty seven minus nineteen n a is equals to one three four zero. So when you will be doing this, it is going to be forty uh, eight. So N A will be equals to. It would be coming out to be one three four zero by forty eight, and after solving, the answer will be coming out to be fifteen point five eight. Fifteen point five eight. As you have considered it to be counterclockwise to be positive, so it is coming out to be positive means answer is counterclockwise. So I feel we have done a mistake here. It was minus nineteen A. So it was plus nineteen. Then fifteen point five eight will be coming. Okay, that's why I was thinking that some calculation error is looking like. So answer is fifteen point five eight. Guys, with this we have completed Tom questions. Now we are entering into the engineering mechanics question. We have two questions from engineering mechanics. Then we will see industrial engineering question, and then we will complete it. Let us see these two questions, guys. This question is a ram in the form of a rectangular body. Okay. Size it is uh, given as nine meter, and B is given as two meter. So obviously this length is given as seven meter, and they are being suspended by two parallel ropes. Assume the center of mass of the body at its geometry for striking the object P with horizontal velocity of five meter per second. What is the angle? Okay, guys. So you know that when this body is at this position, finally when this ram will be coming to this horizontal position. so you know this string as they are saying it would be having connection here this would also be having connection here and after 
coming to this this will be the new position of its okay and here we need to see about this height h if we are talking about this height h you know this is 7 so this will be 7 cos theta so this h will be what h will be h will be 7 minus 7 cos theta you know when it will be coming down the potential energy will be converting to kinetic energy so i can write mgh is equals to half mv square so mm will get cancelled out g you already know it is mentioned to us as 9.81 h is 7 into 1 minus cos theta is equals to 1 by 2 into 5 ka square Velocity is given as 5 meter per second. You will be getting the value of theta from here. I feel it will be coming out to be after solution 35.1 degrees. So 35.1 degrees means the answer will be D for this. So guys, this was the question from engineering mechanics for one mark MCQ. Let us see the next question for MCQ that is from uh, the equilibrium MCQ for one mark engineering mechanics. A rigid massless tetrahedron is placed such that the vertex O is at the origin and the other vertices ABC lie on the coordinate axis. The body is acted on three point loads of which one is acting at A along X axis. Okay, along X axis. This is let us say FX. And the other is acting along Y axis. Let us say FY. So dear one is acting along FX. Other is acting along FY. And they are saying for the body to be in equilibrium, the third load should be. First of all, you know, these two forces will be giving a resultant. That will be like this. And obviously, third force has to balance this resultant. Then the net force will be zero. Okay, so let us see the options now. First option is along z-axis, not possible. In zx plane, in z x plane but not along z or x that is not correct first of all it should be the x y plane only to balance it so in x y plane but not along x or y axis in y z so only this option is matching because to balance this force we need to have a force in x y plane because if this resultant is in x y plane its balance part will also be in x y plane okay the plane will remain the same only the direction will be opposite answer will be c for this so with this engineering mechanics questions are over now we are moving to the last industrial engineering parts why i'm saying last after this we will be having the engineering mathematics so dear we have a set of jobs this is from sequencing and here a set of jobs u v w x y z arrive at time t is zero you can see this is workstation one this is workstation two if you remember in sequencing we have studied johnson's rule and you must have aware that there are n machine n jobs one machine problem n jobs two machine problem so this is n jobs and two machine problem for that what we are going to do you know that for that we are going to make a box total one two three four five six six jobs are there we will be making one two three four five Six. Okay, now we will see the minimum time in them. The minimum time in them I can see is three. So because of which, as this is in workstation one, then W job will be coming to the first. W job will be coming here. Then if you will see guys, the next small time is going to be four, which is available in second workstation. So you would be going to the last. Then we can see the next smallest time is 4, that is for x job at workstation 1. So x will be going to this. Then the next minimum time is 5, which is at workstation 2 for y. So y will be coming here. 5 is also there for workstation 1 for u, that is why u will be coming here. So w, x, u, last will be z, y, u. So w, x, u, w, x, it is not u, it is v. Okay, this is v. W, x, v. This is not... Okay, I have done this mistake. Let me see first of all. W, x. 
till w x it is fine okay i am making it again don't worry so first we have seen w why w because w was having the minimum time 3 after 3 the minimum is 4 4 is there for x so x will be coming at second place okay then 4 is there for this u will be coming at the last then we will be having next small number is 5, 5 is there in the second for y, so that is why we have put it y here, then 5 is also there, you have already been covered, okay, then we will be having the next number to be 6, okay, so that is also covered, this is uncovered, so now this is going to be 6, and when you are talking about 6 for workstation 2, v will be coming here, and that's why z will be coming here, w, x, z, v, y, u, w, x, z, W X Z V Y U, I feel C option will be the correct one. W X Z V Y U, okay. So W X Z V Y U is the correct answer. That is the C option. Okay, guys. So you know how we have done this. We will find out the minimum time. If it is in workstation one, we will put that job first. If it is in workstation two, we will put that job last. Moving further, guys. Next question from queuing system. Okay, queuing theory is an important topic. I already told you. A queuing system has one single server workstation that admits an infinitely long queue. The rate of arrival of the job in the queuing system follow poison distribution with a mean of 5 jobs per hour. So you can see arrival is lambda. 5 jobs per hour. Then mu is service rate. That is given as 6 minutes. 6 minutes means 10 customers. 10 jobs per hour. So you know we will be finding out rho as lambda by mu 1 by 2. They are saying the steady state operation of the queuing system, the probability that the server is not busy at any point of time. The probability of busy is 1 by 2. So 1 minus rho will be the probability of not busy. That is 1 minus 0.5 answer will be 0.5. Okay, so let me check. I have already done for you guys. The answer is 0.5. D is the right answer. Clear guys? Why I am checking? Because some calculation error may happen. That's why I have to check. Okay. Moving further. This is from the LPP linear programming problem. We have one question from assignment as well. If you see this, add the current basic feasible solution. The simplex method yields the following form of a linear programming problem. This is, uh, I feel, MSQ question. This is MSQ. Minimize Z as minus X1 minus 2X2. And they have given X3 is 2, 2, 2 plus 2 X1 minus X2. X4 is 7 plus X1 minus X2. X4 is 3 minus X1. So, dear, you just need to see here the objective function is written as a function of known basic variable. If the simplex method moves to the adjacent that best improves the objective function which of the following represent the objective function at v1 assuming that objective function is written in the same manner as above. So dear we can replace here x1 and x2 from the equations like if you see this equation if you see this equation x4 is 3 minus x1 so we can write from here x1 as x4 minus 3 when you will be putting this equation then minimize z minus x4 plus 3 minus 2 x2 you can see is there any option where we have minus x4 minus x4 it is not there okay similarly we can try this from here we can write x2 is 2 plus 2x1 minus x3 when you will put this value z will become minus x1 minus 2x2 minus 4 4x1 2x3 so 4x1 will be minus 5x1 plus 2x3 minus 4 so minus 5 minus 4 minus 5 x1 plus 2 x3 you can see d is going to be the right answer for this d is going to be the right answer for this okay 
So D is going to be the right answer for this. Okay, this is MCQ. This is MCQ. If you see this question, guys, uh, we have seen this. Similarly, you can put others also to check it. Moving further, this is from inventory control, guys. A company orders gears in conditions identical to those considered in the economic order quantity model in inventory control. The annual demand is 8,000 gears. So, you know, they have given the annual demand as 8,000 gears. They are saying the cost per order, CO, rupees 300. Holding cost, rupees 12 per month per year. Then the company uses an order size that is 25% more than EOQ. First of all, what is Q star? Q star will be 2D C naught CH. When you will be putting this value, CH will be per month. So to make it per year, you need to multiply it with 12. 2 into 8000 into 300 divided by CH is 144. 12 into 12. Why? Because it is per month given. Solving guys, you will be getting the Q star value. Q star value will be coming out to be what? Let me check it. Q star will be coming out to be 228.125. But they are saying that the company uses a order size 25% more than the optimum order. So Q actual is Q star into 1.25. That will be come out to be guys. Okay, I have done a mistake. Actually, this is going to be 182. This is going to be 182.5. And when you are going to see this, this is coming out to be 228.125. These are the quantities. So, dear, what is the question saying? Uh, determine okay, the percentage change in the total cost of ordering and holding inventory from the associated with optimum order quantity. You know that we need to find out the total cost. So you know that total cost whenever we are going to find out there is a TIC, TAC you know that. So when we are talking about TIC formula for Q star is coming out to be 2D C naught CH. So when you will be finding out it at Q star you would be getting the total inventory cost as 26920.25 rupees. Now you know if you want to find out the total inventory cost at Q, it will be Q by 2 into CH plus D by Q into C naught. You will put Q actual value and then you will be getting this to be coming out to be what? This will be coming out to be 26945.54 rupees. So dear you need to go for percentage change. Percentage change will be TICQ star, sorry Q, TICQ star upon TICQ star. Solving this, you would be getting the answer to be guys, 20, uh, this is going to be 25%, sorry, 2.5%. Because you will be going for into 100, so answer will be 2.5%. C would be the right answer. Clear guys? So this is how you can solve this question. Moving further to the next question, this is an assignment problem. And this was a wonderful question. After that, engineering mathematics will start. So guys, let us see this question. This assignment questions are not coming every year. They are coming with a not a very good frequency. So this year it was there. You can see first of all, we need to consider this as a matrix. This is the assignment matrix. This is a 4 by 4 matrix. As you know, assignment matrix are always going to be the square matrix. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, dear, now the quantities 11, 16. Then we have 5, 10, 7, 8. 
then we have 12 14 17 11 then we have 8 15 11 19 11 9 okay so now guys you know first we will be going for row operation we would be looking the minimum number of every row and we will subtract it from all the other row elements so i would be going for the row operation okay guys so first of all in the first row the minimum number is 11 so it will be 0 5 8 and 2 in the second row 5 is minimum 0 5 2 and 3 third row 11 is minimum 1 3 6 and 0 fourth row 8 is minimum 0 7 3 and 1 this is first operation second operation will be the column operation my dear so after that we will be going for column operation so column operation will be like this we will see the minimum element of each column and subtract from all other columns so dear you would be having here this time in this column 0 is the minimum so 0 0 1 and 0 then you know in this column minimum is 3 so 2 2 0 4 in this 2 is the minimum so 8 0 then sorry 2 will be subtracted now so 2 will be subtracted so i am cross checking it because i have done it yes we are going to get first is yes, uh, this is going to be first row we are getting as 0582 0523 1360 and 0731 now we are going to subtract this okay 2 will be subtracted 8 will become 6 2 will become 0 6 will become 4 3 will become 1 here 0 is the minimum so 2 3 0 1 now dear after making this we are going to make the assignments what is the rule of making the assignment we will see the first row in the first row we already have a single zero this will be assigned we will go for the second row but before that as first row is assigned any zero in this column will be cancelled because in one row and one column only one assignment can be there so dear in the second row we have only one zero okay then we will go to the third row in third row we have two zeros so we will leave for the timing then we will see column wise when we will go to this column this zero will be assigned and this will be closed so you can see we have made total three assignments but matrix size is four so when we are making three assignment matrix size is four the solution is not optimal solution so we need to go for the tick mark approach we need to see first of all that first of all now we need to go for the tick mark approach actually we are going to find out those minimum number of lines which will be passing through all the zeros and those minimum number of lines should be the number of assignments that is three so i want those three lines in which all the zeros can be covered is it clear for everybody so dear we will see first of all first of all we will see that which row in which assignment have not been made so you know in this row we have not made any assignment so in this row where assignment could be made here assignment could be made and that is why i will be ticking this column then dear after ticking this column you know that in this column where assignment have been made here assignment have been made tick this row in this row where assignment could be made there is no zero because here already assignment made so there is no other zero where assignment could be made so these are the three lines we are going to have so guys now we are going to do what now we are going to do what we are going to now make the lines and the lines will be such that it will pass from the ticked column and unticked row okay ticked column and unticked row you can see these three lines are covering all the zeros magic okay when that is the case now what we will be doing now what we will be doing bhai? now what we will be doing we will see all other elements 2 6 2 4 1 1 the minimum of them is 1 
so the minimum of them will be added to all the places where plus sign will be there you can see the plus sign will be here plus sign will be here so at these two position we will be adding this one so zero will become one one will become two okay all other places where lines are passing 0 0 will be remaining untouched 0 4 0 and 2 0 3 now at all other position where no line is passing we will subtract the same minimum element 2 will become 1 6 will become 5 1 3 0 0 now once again we will go for the assignment first row this will be assigned so this row this zero cannot be assigned now second row this zero will be assigned this cannot be assigned now third row okay leave it for the timing leave it for the timing now fourth row now fourth row in the fourth row we are having one zero it will be assigned this cannot be assigned so column wise you will go this will be assigned so dear this 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 and this 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 and this okay and 11 plus 7 is 18 27 and 27 and 4 is 31 and then 41 41 into 300 12,300 rupees will be the answer. Optimal cost is rupees 12,300. I hope you guys enjoyed this industrial engineering subject. Now we will move to the mathematics questions. Okay. So guys, now we will be solving the engineering mathematics question. And the very first question in front of you is consider the system of linear equations. There are three equations x plus 2y plus z is 5. 2x plus ay plus 4z is 12, 2x plus 4y plus 6z is b. The values of a and b such that there exists a non-trivial null space and the system admits infinite solutions. Okay. So guys, first of all, we will write it in the matrix format. So we can write the matrix as, you know, it is 1, 2, 1 and here it is 5. Then we are having this is 2, a, 4 and 12. Then we are having 2, 4, 6 and B. So this is the augmented matrix. We have written it. Okay. Now dear, they are saying that it is going to have infinite solution. For infinite solution, you know that the rank, this matrix is actually AB matrix. Augmented matrix, we are writing it AB. So if the rank of AB, okay, if the rank of AB is equal to rank of A, and that should be less than the order of like you know the order of this matrix is 3 so that should be less than 3 so you can say if the ranks are going to be 2 we will be able to say that condition is going to be for infinitely many solutions so dear first of all let us make some operations you can see if I will be operating R2 as R2 minus this is going to be 2 R1 that will make this 2 as 0 because we are converting it into row Euclidean form and then also on R3, if I am going to apply, it is R3 minus, R3 minus, it is going to be 2 R1. When you will be applying these operations, what you would be getting as, let us see, first will be remaining as it is 1, 2, 1 and 5. Second will become 2 minus 2 will be 0. A minus 4. And it is 4 minus 2. And then you are going to have this 12 minus 10, it is 2. Then you would be having here 2 minus 2 as 0. Then 4 minus 4 will be 0. Then 6 minus 2, 6 minus 2 will be 4. And then you are going to have B, it is going to be minus 10. B minus 10. So dear, whenever we are having this condition, whenever we are having this condition, now what we are going to do we should be doing one more operation and for that for that operation we should be having the r3 to be operated and we want these two terms to be zero 
एंड फॉर दैट पर्पज वी वुड बी सेइंग आर थ्री ऑपरेटेड आर थ्री माइनस टू आर टू सो वेन यू विल बी गोइंग फॉर दिस इट इज वन टू वन फाइव जीरो ए माइनस फोर टू एन टू देन जीरो जीरो यू नो दैट I want this term to be zero only because I want all these terms to be zero, and that will be zero only if a minus four is zero. So for that purpose, you will be putting a minus four to be zero. That will be giving you the value of a to be four. So we are getting a as four, which is there in option A, option C, and so our answer should be either A or C. That is for sure. So if a minus four is zero, then zero minus zero is going to be zero. Four minus four will be zero, and b minus For this is b minus fourteen, and you know for that purpose I need this also to be zero. Then only I will be getting the all elements of this row to be zero, and then the rank will be coming out to be two for this matrix. So dear, for that I will be putting b minus fourteen also to be zero, and this will give me the value of b to be fourteen, and we got a four b fourteen. Answer will be c for this. I feel everybody understood this question. This was the question from matrix and determinant. Total two questions were asked from matrix and determinant. One we have already done it. Okay. Second was from the eigen values and eigen vector. Let us move to the next question. So guys, let us solve this question now. In order to numerically solve the ordinary differential equation dy by dt is minus y for t more than zero with an initial condition y zero is equals to one. The following scheme is employed. Y n plus one. Let us see the scheme. The scheme is y of n plus one minus y of n by delta t. Is equals to one by two into y of n plus one plus y of n. So when you will be having this, you will be having y of n plus one minus y of n is delta t by two. Y of n plus one plus delta t by two y of n. So dear, if you will be taking y of n plus one this side, y of n plus one minus delta t by two y of n plus one. Is equals to delta t by 2 y of n plus y of n. So from here you can write 2 minus delta t divided by 2 y of n plus 1 is equals to delta t plus 2 divided by 2 y of n. From here you are getting y of n plus 1 is delta t plus 2 2 minus delta t. To be y of n, they are saying, guys. They are saying, guys. They are saying, guys, that the condition for with non-physical oscillation, you know, for stable, for stable and physical oscillation, this term what we are getting as two plus delta t by two minus delta t should be less than equal to zero. But as they are saying, the condition required is non-physical oscillation. so for the given condition for the given condition you would be solving this 2 plus delta t by 2 minus delta t to be less than equals to 1 when you will be solving this you will be getting delta t to be more than 2 so when you are getting delta t to be more than 2 so the answer for this is going to be 2 that is b is going to be the right answer This is a slightly different type of question which came this year. Moving to the next question, guys. Next question is from the surface integrals. That is the value of the surface integral. This is given to us. You know that, guys. Whenever we are talking about this is uh, f into n ds over a surface s, we write it as double integral, and here we are writing it as f x. dy dz plus fy dx dz plus fz dx dy if you compare this with the given condition you will get to know here fx is 0 fy is 0 fz is z so we can write this f n ds is equals to z dx dy and if you would be finding out the gradient of f you know that is del by del x fx plus del by del y fy plus del by del z fz 
you would be having the value to be 1. Now we will be going for the Gauss divergence theorem. Gauss divergence theorem. What it says? It says that this double, what we are writing it as z dx dy which is nothing but f and ds over a surface s that can be written as del of f dv and you know for that the answer will be volume of the sphere that is nothing but 4 by 3 pi r cube because the given geometry is the sphere so the volume of sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube so answer will be for this is a a is going to be the correct answer so this is from the vector calculus now let us move to the next question if you still have any doubt here i would like to say how we have kept that you know delta f value is 1 so we can also write this to be dv and you know the integration of dv will be v and we have written that so next question guys is you can see let fz be an analytical function where z is x plus iota y if the real part of z is cos hyperbolic x cos y. So you know that they have given the u to be cos hyperbolic x into cos y. Is it clear? So dear u if you want you can also write cos hyperbolic x in the form of e to the power x that you know we know how to write it. But I can do directly as well if this is the value of u. You know that we are given that a function of fz is written as u of x comma y plus iota v of x comma y. This is given to us. And they said real part is this and imaginary part of fz is 0 and for y is equals to 0. So they are saying if y will be 0 then fz will be 0. Uh, sorry, imaginary part of fz will be 0. You need to find out fz. So dear u is this, you know that there is a CR equation needs to be followed by analytical function. What is CR equation? CR equation says del u by del x should be equal to del v by del y and del v by del x should be equal to minus del u by del y. So when you will be going for del u by del x, that can also be written as ux. For that y will be variable. I would like to tell you when you will be putting the cos hyperbolic x cos hyperbolic x in terms of in terms of e k power x and all you will see the differentiation of this cos hyperbolic x will be coming sin hyperbolic x cos y will be as it is cos y will be as it is cos y will be as it is guys then we are going to have del u by del y that will be u y for that y will be variable so cos hyperbolic x will be as it is cos y will become minus sin y okay guys so we got ux and ui and you know if we have fz as this we can also write f dash z is equals to del u by del x plus iota del v by del x and you know that del v by del x can be written as minus del u by del y so we can also write it as del u by del x minus iota del u by del y. We already have both the values this and this. Let us put the values f dash z is equals to. That is first of all ux. ux is sine hyperbolic. Sine hyperbolic x cos y minus iota. You know ui already is minus minus will become plus. So cos hyperbolic x sin y. dy. Why dy? Okay. This is this much. So dear we have this as f dash z. Is what is the next step? We would be putting this is actually we will be putting x is equal to z y is equal to 0. And then only you would be getting this to be as f, z, f dash z is equals to sin hyperbolic z cos 0 plus iota cos hyperbolic 0 sorry x sin 0 you know sin 0 is 0 cos 0 is 1 so you would be getting fz to be the integration of integration of sin 
hyperbolic z and that is going to be plus iota cos hyperbolic z you are putting x to be z okay x to be z and this is going to be sine hyperbolic z plus iota cos hyperbolic z and this you already know is going to be dz okay but you know as this sine 0 was 0 so this term will be going to be 0 so we are getting fz as integration of sine hyperbolic z dz so finally we are getting this integration of sine hyperbolic z dz which is nothing but cos hyperbolic z okay so if you are talking about cos hyperbolic z plus integration constant will be c so the answer for this should be should be should be obviously this because only one option is matching c is going to be the right answer cos hyperbolic z will be the right answer okay so the answer for this is going to be cos hyperbolic z clear for everybody this is the question from the analytical function guys so answer will be cos hyperbolic z moving further this is a complex variable question next question is this one so dear if you see this question they are saying let this is a twice differentiable function from r square to r if p x naught related to r square where double uh, this is the mod of p is sufficiently small this is the euclidean norm or distance function where f x naught plus p is given as this this was looking like a very dangerous question is a point on the line segment joining x naught and x naught plus p if x naught is the strict local minima of fx then which of the following statements are true so dear you need to understand here the concept of local minima so whenever we are talking about the concept of local minima local minima so you know whenever we are talking about local minima let us say y is equals to fx we are having as a function so for that dy by dx is equals to 0 and d square y by dx square to be positive this is the condition for local maxima is it clear for everyone or not everybody understand this or not everybody understand this or not this is the condition for local 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 maxima and guys if we are assuming this function fx as ax square plus bx plus c then dear a should be positive this is one condition when we are talking about the local minima so when we are talking about the local minima so these are the conditions that needs to be satisfied if you see this if you see this in the option so you will find this delta of fx naught p is zero here and this is delta square is positive here so in other options this is negative in other option this is zero this is zero so that is why option a is looking like to be the correct option so here statements are quite confusing but solutions are very simple and obviously i can understand if a student will look this type of question for the first time he may get confused in the statement but the answer for this is going to be a guys okay the answer for this is going to be a guys i hope everybody got it yes is it clear so guys these are the conditions we are using moving further next question next question is if x t satisfies the differential equation this this is the question from differential equation you know how to solve it we can write it as t into dx by dt plus t minus x is equals to 0 so dear we can write it as dx by dt plus 1 minus x by t is 0 and we can write dx by dt minus 1 by t into x is equals to minus 1 so if you see you can write it as dx by dt plus px is equals to q you know this is the format of linear differential equation you need to find out integration factor okay here p is minus 1 by t q is minus 1 so first of all you will be finding out the integrating factor that is e to the power p dt for this case you know e to the power integration minus 1 by t dt you can write it e key power minus ln t you can also write e key power 
ln 1 by t. So it would be coming out to be 1 by t. So 1 by t is the integrating factor we got. Okay. Now I feel everybody is aware of how to solve the question. You would be writing x into integration factor is equals to integration q into integrating factor dt. x integrating factor is 1 by t integration of minus 1 into integrating factor is 1 by t dt. Further solving x by t minus ln t plus integration constant c. They have given initial condition x of 1 is 0. So put t is equals to 1, x is equals to 0, you will get c is equals to 0. So x is equals to minus t ln t is the function. What is asked from you? You need to find out the value of x2. So x is minus 2 ln 2. When you will solve, solve it guys, the answer will be coming. I have already solved it for you. You would be getting it to be, uh, it is coming out to be what? Let me check it where I have solved it. Yes, minus 1.38, minus 1.3863. This would be the answer. This is a numerical answer type question. And this would be the answer. They are asking rounded up to two decimal place. So it would be minus 1.39. I hope everybody got it. This is the question from differential equation once again. Moving further guys, next question is once again from the matrix. This is the matrix is given and they are asking negative eigenvalue if A is greater than. So you know that they have given the matrix if A is equals to matrix 1, A, 8, 3, then you know A minus lambda I can be written as, that is, this is 3, okay, 1 minus lambda, A, 8, 3 minus lambda. When you will be solving this, it is 1 minus lambda into 3 minus lambda minus 8A, okay. So this is, we can write it like that. They are saying the negative eigenvalue. You know, if I, even one eigenvalue will be negative, you know the product of eigenvalue is going to be negative. So what is the uh, determinant of this 1A, 8, 3? This will be 3A minus, sorry, 3 minus 8A. So this 3 minus 8A should be less than 0. Why? Because even if one eigenvalue is going to be negative, the product of eigenvalue will be negative because you know lambda 1, lambda 2 are two eigenvalues and their product is determinant of A. So because of that you will be writing 3 minus 8A to be less than 0, A to be more than 3 by 8. Answer for this will be B. A should be more than 3 by 8. So you can see two questions are from matrices, they were good and easy and differential equation question was slightly challenging the first one and analytical was slightly lengthy but you can see the type of questions are uh, whatever we have done not all but 85 80 85 percent questions from maths are also very simple side or you can say the uh, that expected type of questions moving further next is from the probability and we are having one more question after that also so let x be the continuous random variable defined at 0 1 okay such that the probability density function fx is 1. Okay, they are saying that he fx is, this is 1 when x is 0 to 1. Okay, and otherwise 0. For 0 to 1 is this. This is given to us. And they are saying let y log e x plus 1 then you need to find out the expected value of y you need to find out expected value of y okay so dear you know expected value of x can be written as x fx dx this integration x fx dx this integration so dear if you want to write down the e of any other function g of x that will be integration g of x fx dx 
but we are interested in the value for y so you would be writing we are interested in expectation of y so this is going to be y into fx dx and they are also saying that they are also saying that he here the random variable is defined for 0 to 1 so integration will be from 0 to 1 and for 0 to 1 fx is fx is 1 so you can also write it as integration y into 1 dx 0 to 1 so when you would be having integration what is y y is log e x plus 1 dx this is from 0 to 1 so guys i feel everybody is aware that now we would be going for the integration of this which you have studied in the 12th class okay so when you would be going for this integration integration of that is nothing but ln x plus 1 dx that is from 0 to 1 that can be written as x ln of x plus 1 minus integration of x by x plus 1 dx from 0 to 1 and then we can also write it as x ln x plus 1 and minus going to be x minus ln of x plus 1 0 to 1 and when you will be solving this you would be getting ln of x plus 1 into x plus 1 minus 1 0 to 1 putting the value you would be getting 0 0.38629 that is nearly equals to 0 0.39 so dear that was a lengthy calculative problem once again from the probability okay so i feel everybody understood this and the answer for this is going to be two decimal places 0.39 so mathematics i would say on the difficult side in reality but yes 70 80 percent questions were expected type okay but not easy to solve they were lengthy Moving to the next question, which is the last one for mathematics. If the value of double integral, this is log e a by 24, then a is. Okay, so you need to find out this value. This is x is equals to 3 to 4. y is equals to 1 to 2. dy dx upon x plus y ka square. First, I am telling you the region in which we are talking about. You are talking about x is equals to 3 to 4. So, let us take 3, 4. y is equals to 1 to 2. So, we are talking about this region. Okay, we are talking about this region. So dear, now what we are going to do, we are going to write it as x is equals to 3 to 4. I am taking it separate. y is equals to 1 to 2. It is dy x plus y ka square dx. We can write it like this. Obviously, yes. Then dear, we are further doing it x is equals to 3 to 4 and I am putting here x plus y is equals to t. So when I will be putting x plus y is equals to t then you know when we are doing, uh, doing it like that then you would be having x plus y is equals to t. So here we would be having dt upon t ka square and what will be the units or uh, limits of t when we are talking about you already know uh, y is from 1 to 2 we are going to have so we can write it as 1 plus x to 2 plus x because y is becoming 1 so limit of t will be what when you will be putting y 1 so t is equals to 1 plus x to 2 plus x so we are going to do like that and you are also having dx on the other side. Okay. So when we are going to do this x is equals to 3 to 4. You know t ka square can be written as minus 1, 2 minus 1, 
sorry minus 2 plus 1 and minus 2 plus 1 this is the integration and this is from 1 plus x to 2 plus x dx you know t ki power minus 1 by minus 1 it is going to be minus outside 1 by t dx limits are 1 plus x 2 plus x so we are going to have integration minus 1 by t dx and limits for this is 3 to 4 3 to 4 not yes 3 to 4 and this is 1 plus x to 2 plus x so we can write minus 3 to 4 when you will be putting it is 1 by x plus 2 minus 1 by x plus 1 dx you know it can also be written as ln x plus 2 minus ln x plus 1 integration is going to be from 3 to 4 and after solving when you will be putting upper limit and lower limit we will be getting the answer as I have solved it for you where I have solved it let me see so the answer for this is going to be what it is going to be yes it will be coming out to be ln 25 by 24 ln 25 by 24 so dear now you can see they have given a by 24 so answer will be 25 answer is perfect integer so that's why they are asking also in integer so guys with this we have completed the mathematics questions now uh, Vipin sir would be joining us for power plant questions and with that the complete paper solution will be over I hope you guys have enjoyed this session with our team so goodbye from my side now Vipin sir is joining hi everyone so in this particular video we are going to discuss this question of power plant engineering now the question says which one of the following statement regarding a Rankine cycle is false that means it is saying which one is false or incorrect right and something they are asking about cycle efficiency right how does cycle efficiency changes different different factors now before we discuss this let us discuss few things about Rankine cycle and I hope that you are all aware that when we talk about Rankine cycle so we draw this type of diagram TS diagram and for a simple Rankine cycle I can draw something like this so this is my boiler turbine condenser and pump right so one two three four and this is basically condenser pressure this is my boiler pressure and this is my temperature of heat rejection and this is my mean temperature of heat addition now what is mean temperature of heat addition so mean temperature of heat addition is equals to t2 plus t3 by 2 so t2 is this t3 is this okay so whatever is there average of t2 and t3 right now when we talk about the efficiency of Rankine cycle we can write is equals to 1 minus temperature of heat rejection by temperature of mean temperature of heat addition now this is how we can write this if you want to increase in order to increase if you want to increase the efficiency of Rankine cycle then you by the by this formula you can do it two ways what 
either either you can decrease this then your efficiency of frontend cycle will increase or your mean temperature of heat addition you increase so what if you want to do some modification in the cycle you will do it in a way that either you decrease the mean temperature of heat rejection or you increase the mean temperature of heat rejection okay now let us read the statements first statement is telling you cycle efficiency increases as the condenser pressure decreases so it is telling you that if condenser pressure decreases cycle efficiency increases is it correct yes it is correct because let us say if you decrease the condenser pressure then condenser temperature is also going to decrease condenser temperature is also going to decrease that means it is what temperature of heat rejection so if temperature of heat rejection will decrease your Rankine cycle efficiency will increase. That means it is correct. Okay? Next statement. The pressure at the turbine outlet depends on condenser temperature. Of course, it is true. Whatever is coming out from the turbine, this is 3 to 4 is turbine, right? This is your turbine. So, whatever is coming out of turbine is entering into condenser. So, turbine exhaust pressure is determined by the condenser pressure that is completely true next is cycle efficiency increases as the boiler pressure decreases that means it is saying if you decrease the boiler pressure then Rankine cycle efficiency increases and it is completely wrong you see if you decrease this pressure then your mean temperature of heat addition will decrease and therefore therefore your Rankine cycle will decrease so this statement is incorrect and finally what do we have superheating the steam in the boiler increases the turbine efficiency it is evidently clear that when you do superheating superheating is what you go like this and then you superheat and then come down so basically you have changed your temperature to T3. So that means this T3 is increased. So according to this mean temperature of addition will increase and cycle efficiency or Rankine cycle efficiency will also increase. So that is also correct. So D is also correct. So the only false statement that we have is T. So C is the correct option in this question. Okay. Let's move on to the next question so now we are going to discuss this question from power plant engineering and let us read the question very carefully td compressible flow of air takes place through a adiabatic converging diverging nozzle okay so we have a converging diverging nozzle as shown in the figure for a particular value of pressure difference, whatever pressure we are, you know, assuming here, let us say this is P1, it is P critical. Here we have back pressure here, okay? Whatever is coming out is back pressure, okay? Now, across the nozzle, I stationary. Now, whatever pressure difference we have created here, what is happening here? At certain region, at certain region in the diverging section, a normal shock is formed okay a stationary normal shock waveform in the diverging section of the nozzle now if e and f denotes the flow conditions just upstream and downstream so e is showing upstream condition before the normal sh sh shock f is showing the downstream condition after the normal shock okay so which one of the following is true now one thing we know, what do we know that across a normal wave, across a normal shock 
wave. So whenever we see a normal shock wave, pressure increases. Pressure increases. Density also increases. Yes, because earlier the molecules are little, you know, uh, little far apart. But whenever shock wave form, they basically they collect at a certain place. So density increases. Mach number decreases. Let me write it this way. Pressure increases, density increases, Mach number decreases. Okay. And other things are also there. For example, stagnation pressure decreases, temperature remains constant. Okay. Chalo. Now, from this logic, can we say if whenever there is a normal shape, pressure is increasing. So, if pressure is increasing, can I say pressure at F, yani ki, after the shock wave, is greater than pressure at E? Yes, yes, because pressure is increased. Density is also increased means density at F is greater than density at E. Mach number will be decreased. So I would have to say Mach number at F is less because it is decreased than Mach number at E. Similarly, I can say stagnation pressure at F is less than stagnation pressure of E. Okay, now let's read the statement and see which one is incorrect. Okay, I think it is asking for incorrect, right? Okay, it is asking for true. Which of the following options are true? Is the, it is a multiple select question. So more than one option can be true. Okay, let's see. Static pressure of E is lower than static pressure of F. Yani ki E pressure is low at E. That means it is simply saying pressure at F is greater than pressure at E. So this is correct. Yes. Density of E is lower. So density of F is greater than density of E. If E is lower means F is higher. This is also correct. Mach number of E is lower than Mach number of F. This is not correct. Mach number of F is lower. F is lower. Okay. So this is not correct. Specific entropy at E. Okay. It was not entropy. I think it was gravity. Okay. If I remember it correctly from the question paper, I think it is gravity. Okay. It was not talking about entropy if I remember it correctly. Okay. So when we talk about the specific gravity, so what is gravity? Specific gravity is density of the fluid divided by density of reference. Yani ki this is constant. Only we are talking about this. So if density of specific gravity at E is lower, yani ki, if density of E is lower, that means specific gravity is also lower. Because what is specific gravity? Density by some constant. So if density is lower, specific gravity will also be lower. So that means this is also correct. D is also correct. So we have correct option as A, B and D. Three options are correct. Okay, Chali. let's move on to the next question. Okay, so very big question is given here. We will try to read the question and we will see what we can do in this. Okay, so now Consider an air standard baraton cycle with adiabatic compression and turbine and a regenerator is also given as shown in the figure. Air enters the compressor at 100 kilopascal and 300 Kelvin. That means it is entering at 300 Kelvin. T1 is 300 Kelvin and exits the compressor at 550 Kelvin. The air exits the combustion chamber. Combustion chamber exit means 0.4 at 1250 Kelvin and exits the adiabatic turbine at 800. This is 800 Kelvin. The exhaust air from the turbine is used to preheat the air in the regenerator. 
the exhaust air exits the regenerator at stage 6 at 600 yani ki this is 600 kelvin there is no pressure drop across the regenerator and the combustion chamber also there is no heat loss that means it is a perfect regenerator basically the ratio of specific heat at constant pressure is given as 1.4 we have to find out thermal efficiency so very simple question guys first of all just for your help you can draw ts diagram One, two, three, four. It's not one, two, three, four, but it is one, two. And then we have a regenerator, let us say here somewhere. Uh, three, then we have four, five, and then we have six here. Okay. Now they are giving, sir, this is 300 Kelvin T1. T2 they have given 550. T4 they have given, this they have given 1250 Kelvin. T5 they have given 800 Kelvin. And this 6 they have given 600 Kelvin. So we need to find out thermal efficiency. Now guys, it is very simple. Thermal efficiency of an Enkine cycle, either you can calculate 1 minus Q rejection by Q in, Q supply. Either you can do this or the other way of doing it is, so what is this? 1 minus Q rejected is how much? Look, this much is rejected and this much will be supplied. So rejected is how much? T6 minus T1 upon rejected, yes, and T4 minus T3, T4 minus T3. The only issue is I do not know T3, so I can find out T3. How, for a perfect regenerator, I can say Q rejected is equals to Q supplied. So how much heat is rejected? From here, heat is supplied here. So, heat rejected will be H5 minus H6 is equals to, this is heat rejected. Heat supplied is heat absorbed. So, H3 minus H2. Now, I can write MCP, MCP I can cancel. Okay, I can write MCP T5 minus T6 is equals to MCP T3 minus T2, this will get cancelled. So, from here, I can find out, sir, T3 is equals to T5 minus T6 plus T2. So, this is 800 minus 600 plus 2, T2 is 550. And this will be 200 plus 550. This is 550. This is 750 Kelvin. So I can put here. Nothing is left here. T6 is. T6 is 600 minus 300 upon 1250 minus 750. So, 1 minus 300 by, I think, uh, this is what 500, I think, right? Correct? I think it is 500 only, no? Yes. Okay? And from here, I can write efficiency of Rankine equals to 1 minus 3 by 5, 1 minus 0 0.6, so 0 0.4. So efficiency is coming as 40%. 40% is the correct answer. Okay. 40% is the correct answer. So you can write 40 here. Okay. 
so these are the three questions in power plant that we need to discuss so i hope that you attempted these questions correctly thank you very much bye bye